Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Lorelai Shamayo. This is the Me We Awakening panel for energizing body, mind, heart, and soul. We have events throughout the Northwest, um, starting in the fall again, and online. So clearly this is our online panel. There are eight or nine of us that will be here on the panel tonight. We'll be answering your questions on any topic. And the theme tonight is self-image and self-esteem. We all share lots of different modalities. We'll be sharing with you about what those modalities are. And we all have our own journeys with and our own lessons with and the ways that we support people with self-image and self-esteem. Oh, and this is one of those topics that's like totally great and rich and like I've not prepared what I'm gonna say. And so it's gonna be really interesting to see uh, what comes out tonight. Oh, so we will, um, we're gonna go through and share a bit about who we are first and what we do. Maybe let's all share our names, our modalities, and just a little bit about ourselves first, and then let's wind back and talk about the theme. So if it's really integral to what you do, feel free to talk about it in the first round. Just know we're going to come back and we'll share more. And then we'll be taking questions. Um, it's free to be here to listen and learn, and there's a small price to ask a question. It is 16 to 24 sliding scale, $10 for BIPOC. I'll just put that in the chat right there again, too. If you um, have already paid to ask a question, please let me know in the chat. If you're able to do that, I'm going to go check um, PayPal in a moment. Um, if you do pay, please write in the chat so I know, so I can get you in line promptly. And if you want to pay and it doesn't work by one of those methods, I can also run things through Square on my phone so we can find a way to do that as well. I will be putting the practitioners up on spotlights. You'll be able to see them at the front. And uh, when you want to ask a question, we'll spotlight you if you're willing to be on video. It's totally up to you what you want to do. Um, yeah. All right. Let's have the practitioners go through and start sharing about ourselves. And practitioners, it's a full house. So probably like around two-ish minutes would be great. Two, two and a half minutes or so. Um, yeah. All right. Maybe we'll use the same order um, that we used for our Facebook Live earlier. We have Sandra, Kendara, Susie, Sally, Lisa, Audrey, and Susan. All right. Go ahead, Sandra. And if you, if you forget something, don't worry. We'd come back and you can share afterwards, too. Okay. Hi. My name is Sandra Jeffs. And I do Soul Essence Awakening, and I also am a Feng Shui master, been practicing for almost 25 years. Um, so I use everything, all of the tools that are there. I use a lot of Theta Healing, um, and Theta Healing is a way to um, shift and transform limiting beliefs in your life um, uh, to close karma that you have that's also limiting or blocking you in any way and i use a whole lot of other things my goal is always to give you tools to empower you so that you're able to go away and do this work on your own as much as possible also so that's me i'm sandra jeffs thanks sandra i think we've got kendara next Hi, everybody. I'm Kendara in beautiful Denver, and I'm delighted to be here. Um, some of the things I do are tarot, I Ching, but my favorite is belief shifting, similar to what Sandra does, and that's helping you identify self-defeating beliefs that often started in childhood and removing them and replacing them with positive behavior and beliefs so you can manifest what you want. Thank you. All right, we're going for the shorter intros today. Great, we have more time for questions. All right, Susie is here. Yep, yep, I am. Hiya, I'm Susie Parker Goins of Blue Lightning Healing and Blue Lightning Healing Meditation. I am a channel, so I am able to bring through energy for your guides in a way that's very resonant or accessible for you. And it's during these conversations, and that's what they are, are conversations where you can exchange ideas and ask questions. I don't care, tell jokes. These are guides who are here to support you on your path. Frequently, we find, well, frequently a session will go the way it absolutely needs to so that you can clear out those things that are holding you back whether it's past life trauma or energy blockages whatever it is that's standing in your way getting in your way and preventing you from living your best life and so frequently those are old thought patterns i've got meditation a meditation series called blue lightning healing meditations it's on spotify and apple and go to anchor.fm and you can find the places. And yeah, I'm looking forward to, to finding, to creating this space so we can all work together to uplift. So thanks very much for being here. All right, Sally. 
Hi, my name is Sally. I'm from Sally Spiritual Guidance. I'm a psychic, intuitive tarot and oracle card reader, as well as a psychic medium. I provide a variety of different readings. I try, I have a list on my Etsy shop, but you can always email me and I can cater the reading to whatever you need. Um, if you can't find what you're looking for. Um, my passion is mediumship because I enjoy bringing messages of comfort and healing from your crossover loved ones. I find sometimes just one session with that is enough. People don't even need to come back because, you know, they gotten the closure that they needed um, or they think they need, you know, whatever it is. So I'm just glad that you're all here. I enjoy being at these and I hope you guys have a great night. Thank you. Thanks, Sally. All right, Lisa. Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa Knowlton, and I have Morphine Minder on my title, um, but I've, I do illuminating heart readings, illuminating heart readings. So I help illuminate what is in your heart because the mind has a tendency to drown out what the heart is trying to say. Therefore, this is where the morphing mind comes in. So once we get or address, get to the, uh, the core of what the heart is wanting to speak, then I teach people how to work with how the mind tends to get in the way of what the heart is trying to, how the heart is trying to lead you. So I have a lot of experience in this um, because there were many years as a yoga practitioner and a yoga teacher that I heard, lead with your heart, trust your heart, but I didn't know how to do that, even with all the physical training that I had. So it literally took me breaking my own heart by leaving my husband a few years ago and stepping into a disorganization of my life so that I could understand and learn about what love is. So one of the reasons why I chose to be on this panel tonight um, was because I have personal experience with my interest and my own um, disparities with self-image, but I also work with what I call love warriors and lords of light who encourage me daily to believe in more love. So their message for everybody tonight is to have the courage to believe in more love and whoever asks questions and um, how I um, interpret the question and the answers that come with that, that will be a huge part of how do we do that? How do we believe in things that we've been disencouraged to believe in for so long? Thanks, Lisa. All right, Audrey. Hello. Uh, very happy to be here. My name is Audrey Lee. Uh, I'm into astrology, numerology, tarot cards, uh, destiny cards. Uh, I believe that all of these things are uh, tools for us to get to know ourselves to overcome our own obstacles or to learn about uh, you know, various lessons, whether it's about money or family values or ourselves. Because after all, uh, the bottom line is the self. Right? When we close our eyes, we just uh, uh, we we still have to face ourselves every day. Right? So the next day when we wake up, we have to face ourselves. And um, uh, so I look forward to meeting all of you to talk about different things, uh, to shed light in uh, the different areas, the different difficulties that you have. Um, all, my, all of my information can be found at my website, audreeleemetaphysics.com. And I also have uh, meetups every Monday night talking about uh, different metaphysical topics. Thank you so much. Thanks, Audrey. All right, Susan. I'm Susan Watkins with Inspired Life Essential Wellness, and I offer intuitive uh, readings and coachings with oracle cards, as well as Reiki and sound healing and some mindful movement, just helping people connect back to themselves and tuning in to what really matters to them, how they want to show up for themselves and what might get in the way of that. Um, we often will use a guided meditations as well as some journaling. So I'm really, um, I really love being a part of these panels and, and I am honored to be a part of your journey. So thank you for sharing your evening with us. All right, and uh, Henry should be joining us. There are some tech difficulties. Just so you know what Henry does. Um, Henry India Holden offers spiritual direction, life coaching, and tarot guidance. And um, his ins uh, their insight is lovely and brilliant, and I'm excited to have them be part of the panel too. Well, hopefully they will make it. 
And then I'm Lorelai Shamayo. I'm an intuitive eye reader and a body psychology coach. I read your eyes, read your soul to help you better know and love your soul, give yourself more permission, give your soul more permission to express. Um, that's our purpose here, I believe, on this plane. Um, and I help you make choices that are great for you. Things like career, relationships, choosing relationships, matchmaking, um, supporting your kids to be who they are, um, looking in the mirror, right? And we'll talk about loving yourself. We'll talk about that so much more in just a few minutes. Um, yeah, so that's what I do. Um, I guess the body psychology is often helping us grow through lessons, and I'm, I'm imagining that will come up a bit tonight. So there's a can be an intellectual understanding that leads into a feeling experience that involves healing, and then also um, specific cues that come through in our body expression and ways we can utilize our body to shift and grow through lessons too. That's what I offer. All right. Well, let's see. Any practitioners have anything else you wanted to share about your modalities or anything like that before we go on to talk more about the theme? Okay, great. Well, let's open it up to talk about the theme. We can go in the same order. Um, I hope you all want to mix it up in some way. That's fine too. And like, yeah, whatever order. And again, maybe keep it to um, a minute or two or something like that. Hmm. Did you want to start, Sandra, or do you want to start somewhere else? I'm open. Sure, I can start. Great, go ahead. Um, yeah, the theme. Um, the theme for me, um, finding your self-worth and stepping into who you are as an inside job. And most of us know that, but to actually apply it in a world that we're, especially if you're a woman, um, how you appear and how you present yourself is so important and critical. And it is important and critical. However, it doesn't mean anything if you don't have that inner light, you don't have that inner shining come through. And a lot of the problem with stepping into being safe to show who you are is, um, is the belief systems that we hold around that. Most people know that from the age of, of um, birth to seven, five years old to seven, our personalities are formed and our habits and our belief systems and our programming. So unprogramming ourselves is really difficult to do because the programming has gone into the uh, unconscious mind and our conscious minds don't speak directly to our subconscious our uh, unconscious minds so we can do you know affirmations for years and years and still only shift a little bit the the um, importance is to get at those programs and really shift them and install programs that support us uh, to for the goals that we have in our life and for who we are. Um, and that's a lot of what I do with uh, all of the modalities that I use, but especially with Theta Healing, which is really fast to discover what the uh, limiting beliefs are and then to shift them. Um, it's also very safe because you're in total control to say, no, I want to keep that limiting belief. I don't care. I'm going to keep it. I don't want to let go of it. And when you're ready, you will. Um, but it is an inside job. You have to, you have to feel that confidence inside who you are. And then it doesn't matter if you're wearing tor torn, dirty clothes, or, you know, <laughs> you look like you just came out of a rainstorm or whatever, because your inner light will shine. So that's, I think what I think is really important with this topic. The dog is going again. Feel free to jump in whoever's next. I think Kendara. I think I'm next. Um, I resonate so much with what Sandra said, and I love the concept that it's all an inside job. So one of my favorite things to do is just like I said earlier, we all have so much power and so much potential but a lot of times we hold ourselves back because we're so concerned about what other people are gonna think. And so we can catch it in our language, like things like this never happen for me, they're just too good. And once we connect with it and give ourselves permission to have used them in the past, then we just need to find the gift in it and then we can shift it. And once we shift it, we absolutely empower ourselves. And it's almost like the universe is saying, okay, you're on it, we're gonna work with you. 
And so I love the idea of self-empowerment by shifting and removing self-defeating actions and behaviors. And that's it. <laughs> and all right, all right, Susie. So self-esteem, self-worth. When I, I, I know it's, I agree, it's an inside job. You've got to do it. There's nothing externally that's going to change you up. Um, but it can, with so many deeply entrenched beliefs that we've pulled onto ourselves, it's not an easy task. And I don't have any glib things I can say. It's like, oh, you just got to do this. I mean, my own path of, of realizing my own, of improving my self-esteem, I started with the body. And honestly, it all started with my right ankle. I needed to, to, to love myself somehow, and it was my right ankle, and I worked my way up from there. I would put henna on it, I would stand with it out, and that helped me um, to understand that there was some part of me that was better. And then since then, it has spread out not just through the body, but through recognizing the path and the challenges I have faced and to be able to convey that sense of accomplishment is what has improved my self-esteem and it comes out i obviously well obviously i don't like that word anymore but it comes out through my interactions with people but i also understand that not everybody's at the same place so we all have to start somewhere and what i strive to do is to recognize where you're starting from and to support you there that's what this panel is all about is to let everybody know we're not alone we're all working on this together and certainly with the past year we've had an opportunity to sit and go oh okay maybe i can work on this so there's a lot of shadow work involved but it's supported shadow work where you have someone to help you through it whatever means that is um, but once you're able to i feel that that first breakthrough is one of those amazing things and it fuels that internal fire to to encourage you to keep moving forward and working on it so it can be done it is an inside job i totally agree with that and it's it's going to take time and effort but you can do it and we're we'll help you with that so yay yay us for even thinking about it well done thanks susie sally yeah, hopefully my son doesn't come home and the dogs don't go crazy. <laughs> um, so I'll say this as quick as I can. Um, so I have an interesting story. Mine's a little different. I was very, I, I always loved myself as a child. <laughs> I was one of those kids that like twirled around their dress, looked in the mirror. I thought I was just the cutest thing in the world. But people started to make comments about it. And I would be called conceited. You know, my dad would say, oh, you love yourself, don't you? My mom would say little things like that. Oh, look at how she looks at herself in the mirror. And those things started to go in my brain like it was wrong and I shouldn't do that. You know, and it was it was not right to love yourself and admire yourself. There was something wrong with it. And then I would catch myself not doing it, you know, like forcing myself to kind of not be that person that actually liked themselves. And it made me almost a miserable person at times because I, I just went into this slump of like, well, maybe they're right. I shouldn't be looking at myself or maybe this is wrong with myself. You know what I mean? And then also like, you know, when you're super younger and you're pretty and then you get older and you age, you're like, Ugh, this is what happened, you know? And I had to always try to keep myself in that image of myself to kind of make myself always look good. And then, you know, I got sick. I had cancer, I had a brain, um, brain surgery, and I looked like death. I gained lots of weight. And I just thought to myself, what, why, who cares? You know, who cares? Why am I worried about this? Why do I care? I'm alive, I'm healthy, I'm breathing. I wake up every morning and that's enough. And if anyone doesn't like it, then I just can't worry about it, you know? And so I think when you just don't worry about what other people think, there's a saying that what other people think of me is no is none of my business. And if we can just keep that in our minds, then we don't have to worry about what other people think. And the only person that matters is yourself. And I can promise you that no one will ever love you as much as you love yourself. And why do you love other people more than you love yourself? And why do you tell other people how beautiful they are, but look at yourself and not see that? So that's what we need to work on. 
And that's what we hope to achieve tonight. And um, just thanks for having me and I'm excited. Thanks. Thanks, Sally and Lisa. Sally, thank you for that because that really struck a chord in me, um, being a relatively shy girl, but also very athletic. And anytime I expressed that part of myself, I was told I was a show off and even though I was just having fun. So I have a similar story in that, in that way. Um, I think that I was, I was writing down the words self image and the word image and looking at ourselves in the mirror. Um, I think that there is a, there's value to being able to look at myself and see myself in the mirror and believe in, in myself in the way that I appear to myself. But my, my interpretation of what it, what it's like if it's an inside job is that I have to feel that way. So the, so the image isn't in the mirror as much as it is in what I hold inside of myself and how I project it out. And I'm really just kind of understanding this right in this moment as you guys are all sharing your versions and, and as I'm developing my own awareness of this at the same time as you all are. Um, so how I perceive myself and I, and I challenge, I, I get challenged with this every day because I'm also aging and I stopped doing yoga and I stopped pushing myself to be the, uh, the athlete that I was. So my body is very different, but my mind still goes through those moments of <gasps> like, I wake up and I'm like, I got to start going back to the gym today, you know, and, and I, and I, I switch over into the, the image of who I am, instead of um, providing myself more time to feel good, and how can I, sh how can I, and I'm trying to describe <laughs> what I do with my guides every day, because I literally wake up and I'm like, okay, I know I'm afraid, I know today is going to be challenging, and I'm going to meet lots of new people, and how is it, how am I going to look to all these people, um, but I, so I stop and I go into my heart the best that I can, because this has been my journey as the illuminating heart reader to, and I feel this sense of everlasting love for this little heart that I've got inside here. And then I try to generate it outward and upward and up into my mind so that my mind is in a state of love too. And that I'm learning as the morphing minder and from my guides. So um, I find it to be a very, um, it's an effortful journey and that all the parts and all the pieces that we all offer you tonight are going to have an effect on our perceptions. And that not only do, do I get to learn how to perceive myself in this way, but it literally helps me perceive others in the same kind of way. So, um, I'm going to speak freely about this, but as lovingly as I can, because there's there's judgments between us. You know, I'm five two and I weigh this amount, and I am perceived as small and petite. And there's judgments against that, and I feel it because I'm an empath. And then vice versa. I, I I'm probably going over a little time here, but I. I also have a mother who has a very difficult time with people who are larger than, than us. And so I've sort of picked up on that, but through the work that I've been doing, I'm so happy to say that I feel so much better about relating with all shapes, all sizes, men and women more than ever before. <laughs> so I'm really grateful to be here and thank you everybody for um, joining in the conversation and Lorelai for putting this together because I asked her to do this, so thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa, for being the inspiration for this, this theme. Audrey. 
Hello. Uh, so during my many years of counseling, uh, I used to think that, yeah, I'm the specialist of relationships, right? People ask about, oh, my love life or my marriage or my kids, my, uh, you know, uh, my co-workers, my boss, everything, right? So uh, many of us, our lives are surrounded by those those kind of issues. But I find that ultimately we come back to the self. Uh, let's say if uh, you go to a job and you don't get a promotion for two, three years, several years, and you start to wonder, oh, is it that I'm not good? Or especially uh, a lover, you know, oh, uh, I just can't get, you know, I can't get anybody to love me. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, there are just so many different ways. Uh, parents don't give you praises or uh, even aging. Let's say a lady who's getting older. Maybe she starts to feel like, oh, I can't even go hiking. I can't have social life. Uh, I mean, everything in our lives are here to test us. So uh, do you really have yourself? You know, do you still have that confidence, the self-esteem? Do you still have um, a good grasp of who you are? So I think maybe I'm here to help some people understand, uh, you know, some of the blind spots in your life. And, uh, you know, let's have that conversation. Thank you. Thanks so much, Audrey. All right, Susan. Oh gosh, self-esteem and self-confidence is certainly something that um, I have been challenged with, I think my whole life. I am um, the youngest and the only girl and I always saw, I didn't necessarily compete, but I certainly compared and I always felt like my brothers were smarter or, um, you know, my family is very musical and my dad was just this phenomenal piano player and I just made noise, you know, it was always um, trying to be, um, trying to be perfect, really, and never feeling like I could measure up. And so, and then also to being the youngest, you know, with then the only girl, um, you know, the boys wanting to do all the boys things, but then no girls don't do that. And, and so really trying to figure out like, where do I fit in and all this? And then, you know, people will say, oh, you're so quiet. So then I started thinking, well, I'm quiet, I'm shy, I'm introverted. And I am those things, but um, I'm also a lot of other things too. So really trying to figure out like, um, you know, it comes back to self, you know, self image. How do I see myself? Not how people told me I was or how people told me I should be but how I truly see myself and how I truly want to show up for myself and for other people and to stand in my authenticity and of, of who that is. And so it's really been a journey in trying to peel back the many layers of things um, that were put on me, that I put on myself consciously, subconsciously, whatever it might be, and um, to come down to like, who really am I in my own skin? And um, and I think some of that confidence when you have that image, you, you know, you've kind of created that image and then the confidence, you know, comes from, from doing, from taking action, from speaking your truth, even if your voice shakes, even if you know that, oh, well, you don't believe that, you don't really believe that, <laughs> you know? So you have the confidence to finally say something and then, you know, you're shamed or shushed or, um, so kind of this, you know, kind of spiral, my life has kind of been this spiral of um, wanting to be that perfect daughter, perfect sister, perfect student, perfect wife, perfect business person, um, but then really figuring out like who that really is, how, do, how does that really fit with um, what feels good, like uh, Lisa said, what feels good in my heart, what does my heart say? And am I listening from my head or from my heart? Am I listening from what I was told I should or could do or what really feels true and authentic, you know, to me? And I think, you know, really how we talk to ourselves and what we say, you know, matters. Are we looking at something as an obstacle or are we looking at something as an opportunity and being willing to, um, to speak up, even if our voice shakes, to be willing to take action, even if we don't necessarily know 100% how it's going to work out because sometimes that confidence really does come from just, you know, taking that step and, and, um, and speaking up and owning your worth and your value and knowing that your words do have value. 
So I look forward to, um, I don't know what's going to come tonight. That's what's so interesting about these panels. We don't get the questions in advance. We don't talk to each other in advance, but it's always such a beautiful, beautiful flow. So I look forward to, uh, to being a part of everybody's journey and thank you for being a part of mine. Yeah, it's so amazing. Beautiful hearing all of you share and all the different things that we contribute. It's amazing. I was taking notes, right? I have the benefit of listening to all of you and I'm scribbling away. Let me start a little bit about my journey, a time for myself and um, just some of the things that interfered in my own um, self-esteem, self-value, self-image. Um, I had my boundaries crossed when I was very young and so sexual trauma and all the messages I took in about that, about my value and who, right, who determined my value. So safety, so important, I think, in self-esteem and self-image. I studied, I was very interested from a young age in more of the sciences and being in what seemed like a female body. Although coming to find out that I'm, I'm non-binary and I'm queer. And so all these ways that I didn't fit in, what was expected and like working through all those expectations and attempting to open up to myself and open to discovering and appreciating who I am. And I think that for those of us that are queer in various ways, we actually get nudged through a lot of the self-esteem journeys just to come out to ourselves and to others. Um, I've, been, I've been overweight, say, all my life. And in many ways, I've been healthy and physically capable. And um, like I work out twice a week now. And um, so I'm stronger than I've ever been in my life. But um, still, like all kinds of lessons with my body. And I know it just goes way, way back, right, to all of the early abuse, too. And you know, when I was a child, I think I decided I wanted to be ugly so that people would leave me alone and no one would violate me again. And just all these lessons in here. So I'm still on a journey with my own lessons too. Oh, so some of the tools that I use for this, and I'll just kind of rattle off some of the tools now so you have some of the ideas of things that may show up later too. Um, knowing that I and that everyone, we always do the best that we can in any moment. Like, of course we do the best that we can. Even when some people it sucks, even the people that violated me. Um, John Gottman is a researcher on relationships here in Seattle. Um, he talks about the happiest, uh, most fulfilling relationships are where there's a, a ratio of appreciation to criticism of seven to one. So like, what about our self-talk? Do, do we appreciate ourselves seven times for every time we criticize ourselves? I think it's great to just go on a run and see how many you can come up with. Can you get to 20 appreciations? And start with something small, like I appreciate that my ears hold up my glasses to get yourself started. There's a whole journey about me being quirky and having to accept and embrace that I'm quirky. And it just gave me permission to be so weird in so many ways and coming out of the metaphysical closet, right? I think all of us, that's a way that, that we've all had to accept who we are and that we don't fit in with some conventional society. Um, some phrases that I love and they may come up with different people tonight are I approve of myself. I approve of myself. I'm enough. I'm just the right amount. If we get stuck and have trouble opening to some opening to loving ourselves, thinking about a child in our life, might be one of our own kids or a niece or a nephew or a friend's kids or just something in nature. And even if something awkward or difficult or you know, even bad happens, isn't that being inside good? Aren't they innocent inside? And thinking about that and then bringing that back into ourselves and thinking about that being again back to ourselves. And I was thinking about Byron Katie's turnarounds, right? Our negative beliefs about ourselves. Do we know it's absolutely true? Part of the one of the steps of the turnaround. Yeah, so that gives you some of the pieces I thought of. Let me see, there's, oh, and so one of my specialties is, oh, I say for all of us opening to our intuition, I think that our intuition is stronger when we're in a place of self-love and self-appreciation. We're not worried about our image and how we show up for others, right? So these steps are so great for expanding our capacity to be of service. And then one of my, one of the primary ways I share my work is with matchmaking. And so lots of things about self-image and self-esteem come up for people with doing conscious online dating, with doing online dating. Right? So looking at photos of ourselves and, and how comfortable do we feel having photos of ourselves show? And if we get caught up in the images of what we should look like, and is it really who we are? Are we willing to let people see who we really are? We often have to face how we've aged and how we've changed. There's so many people that struggle with having realistic photos of themselves show, of their bodies, not only their faces, and then what ages are you willing to date? So many people go looking for others that are younger and 
It's just what it says about us when we're only willing to look at people who are younger. Yeah, just examples. I think all these, everything we do is an opportunity to expand our self-love. Practitioners, anything else you want to jump in and share about the theme? I, I would. It's, it's one of the things that I learned in my own journey. I went to a reader who said, who gave me this affirmation mantra, but it is to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I love myself just because. No condition, no specifics. I love myself just because. And I do that every morning. And it, um, it has helped me get through a lot of those little niggly things I can open up to, which for me, if I can get the smaller stuff, they don't become really big things. But I would like to share that with everybody. I love you just because. Yeah, and practitioners, if there are any other things like that that you want to toss out that we, we're just all holding the space together before we begin, feel free. I'd like to share about the four agreements. Um, sure. I'm sure many of you probably know it, but it was a life-changing experience when I first read it. And I, I can't remember, maybe it was 15 years ago, maybe 20, I can't remember how long ago. But um, as an empath, I was always very sensitive. And so I did take things personally. And that's one of the agreements you make is to stop taking things personally because it is never about you. It is always about the other person. And Don Miguel Ruiz, who wrote the book, has a story where he says you go into the movie theater and there's your life story told by you and you sit down and you're going yeah yeah that's me that's my life yeah yeah and as you go out you see another marquee and it's your mother telling your life story so you go in there and you're going what that's not me that what and then you get disgusted and you go out and your father's telling the story and that's huh what is and then you go out and it's your brother or your sister or your best friend and they all have very different views about who you are and who you should be and where you're going with your life and his point is that you're the only one who really is the architect of your life and yes we we need to take in the feedback that we get to help us grow and help us shift and move and learn uh, more but the end of the day it as as lisa said it has to feel right in our hearts we have to be connected to that heart space where love is there and love is the same for everybody doesn't matter if i love myself as a kid there is dysfunctional toxic love but that's not really love authentic divine love is the same for everybody so the way if I can love myself authentically divinely I can love you authentically and divinely and that's stepping into your personal power for me Yeah, practitioners, anything else you want to share? Go ahead as Henry's getting ready and then Henry will introduce themselves and share a little about the theme too. So glad you made it, Henry. I'd just like to add one more thing that my, my guides prompted me to say because they actually say it to me on occasion too. Um, they want me to say, what are you screaming for? So when so they'll they'll they train me by saying, scream for more love scream for more love and at first it was like i want more love you know <laughs> um but that's that's sort of how it came to me um so the question is really for all of you out there to ask yourself what you're what are you screaming for and i'd like to add <laughs> things growing up my parents always said to be nice and turn the other cheek. And so it was very, very easy not to become empowered. And what I've learned, one of the best things for self-empowerment is only tell people your goals if they're directly involved in helping you attain them. 
So that's been so helpful for me. So I wanted to share it. May I share a, a personal <laughs> experience? Yeah, sure. sure. Um, <laughs> I, I have a, a dramatic story about my family. Uh, my daughter uh, ran away when she was 18. Uh, you know, so all these years, you know, all the she ran away at 18. Uh, of course, that made me doubt uh, terribly if I was a... Uh, you know, if I was a good mother, uh, if I neglected her, what had caused all of our, uh, you know, distrust and all of that. So, of course, that's a, a, you know, a permanent scar, a big scar in my heart. And that uh, made me wonder about my self-worth. Uh, but then, uh, you know, uh, coming to see my daughter's point of view, uh, she's, a, she's a mixed breed. So she couldn't really find a place in uh, the Asian his in, in the Asian heritage, and she couldn't find a place in the uh, Black heritage. <laughs> so uh, you know, I can see that she's just like a, she's just this lost soul. She couldn't find her place, and so she had to go out there to find herself. Uh, and I just hope that she will come back one day. Uh, but I I can see that there is really no easy answer in any of this. Uh, we're just living in the trauma. Maybe it takes a long time to get over, uh, to really find the answer. There's no easy answer. So that's my personal story. Thank you for sharing. And yeah, things happen that, that aren't under our control and that, that bring up all these questions of our value. Well, Henry, we've, we've gone around and we've introduced ourselves. And then we've started talking about the theme. So feel free to introduce yourself and to talk about the theme. Okay, I so hope that you can hear me. Can you hear me? <sighs> Yay. Yes, okay. So I am Henry India Holden. I can be gotten a hold of on henryindiaholden.com. And uh, uh, let's see here. I, you know how I work with people on anything. I feel divinely guided. Uh, so really there are answers for everything or insights into anything, but I specialize in two things, uh, helping people define their purpose or find it if they just don't know it all and then develop the steps to manifest this purpose. And uh, something that's related to it is helping people um, uh, uh, connect more powerfully with the divine or with however they understand that with their higher power, their higher self to create this beautiful, intimate and empowering and nurturing relationship. And of course, when you do that, then it's very easy to find your purpose because your purpose is related to your divine nature. And um, my show special is 30, 30, 50, 50. So 30 minutes, $30, 50 minutes, $50. And today's theme has to do with possibility. Yes, Lorelai? Right, today's theme is self-image and self-esteem. Yeah, self-image and self-esteem. So, uh, so self-image and self-esteem, uh, it's so interesting how we call it self image and self-esteem because almost without fail uh, what our images of ourselves unless we've done work what our images of ourselves, which then also gives the esteem is what how we think others see us or how others tell us who we are or what the world reflects back to us so it's more diffuse where uh, like for example for many many years I, uh, I, my sense of self was that I'm unlikable, like Hillary Clinton, you know, and uh, I, this had nothing to do with it. Did I feel unlikable? Did I think of myself as unlikable? No, but the world was reflecting something back that I then interpreted that way. Now, what did it have to do with um, that? My brother was not happy that I was born six years after he was, you know, the king in the castle. And he didn't like me and I internalized that. So that was a self image that was not my image at all. It was my brother's image 
So it's the brother image, not the self image. And so when we distinguish between the self and, the, and anything else, that's when we can start saying, how do I feel? Well, who am I to myself? And we can look then inside and then when we can connect with our divine self, then of course it all reveals itself. So that's what I have to say about that. I don't wanna keep talking too long because I like to, you know, it's easy for me to just keep chatting. So thank you so much. And I'm just so happy to be here. Hello, Susie, shout out to you. Always lovely to see you. And uh, sorry, I didn't hear the last question. I just didn't come in on time, but uh, I just love being here. Thank you, Lorelai, for making this um, possible for all of us, the people who are attending, as well as the practitioners and um, what else. And so I can't wait to hear your questions and be of service any way I can. Thank you. Thanks, Henry. So yeah, practitioners, just anything else you want to jump in and share about the theme before we get going? And give everyone space. So I know we've got one question in line already. I put the information in the chat again. Um, okay, great, great, great. Yeah, so the information in the chat is there to pay. Please let me know if you have paid. You can pay by PayPal or Venmo, or I can run things on Square. Not be up to date with everything, but I know we've got at least one in line. Um, so before we start, when you ask a question, so keep in mind that this is recorded and this will be this will be posted publicly. So you ask a question. We may go deeper than you intend us to go in this public format, or we may start talking about other topics that for us are related, but that you don't want us sharing about here. Please let us know. You can let us know in the beginning before we start. You may need to remind us as we go through. And at any point, if we share any of those things that you don't want us sharing here, please unmute and call out and get our attention or um, get on the video and wave your hands right in the chat, whatever you need to do to get our attention so that we can shift and honor you in the way we answer. We believe that everyone is intuitive and these panels are great opportunities to practice opening to your intuition. When someone asks a question, when you see someone who's about to ask a question, things may appear for you. You might wanna write those things down, anything that arises for you, because they often are fleeting. And then we request that you hold that until we finish answering someone's question. And then if you want, you're welcome to write them privately in chat and ask if they'd like to hear what came through for you. And please honor whatever they share. If they say no, please trust. They're doing their best to honor themselves. They might be full after maybe getting nine answers tonight and trust that it came through you for some other reason. Uh, is there something else, something else? Maybe that's it. We just invite you to learn from all that is asked and all that is shared tonight. And thank you so much for holding space for, for all that we're doing here. We do this all together. These events got created together as a community and we all co-create them every time. And Lisa, thank you so much for this theme. All right, I'm gonna take one of us off. I'll take myself off. Um, for, well, I start pulling all of us off and then, um, or I could probably pull us all off at once. How does this work? Move all spotlights. All right, great. So Andrea, I believe you wanted to ask a question tonight. Is that right? Is that you, Andrea? I'm gonna spotlight you. Yes, oh. it's Drea. Well, let's yeah, see, is it Drea yeah. or Andrea? I have. Um, my nope, name not this is one. Okay, Andrea. Oh, okay, okay sorry. My name is I just Andrea didn't know. We have two of you tonight, and there might sorry. be, I don't know. Sorry, Andrea. It's okay. Which? So let's go see. So is it Drea? Is it you? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I... That's great. My name I'm is just, Andrea, but they call me Drea. That that's is, great. I'm that's so great. Sorry. I knew, I knew like it might be you, thing. but I wasn't sure. Okay, just <laughs> want to make sure that whoever paid to ask a question is the one that gets up here. All right, great. Oh yeah, I can't spotlight oh. you because you, oh. but if you don't have to, you don't have to be spotlight. Okay. So oh yeah, because I'm a nurse, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Okay. All right. I thought it was a different name. But so that's why I love last name, but it's great. Did you want to ask your question? Do you want me to read? Like yeah. Uh -huh. um, you can read what I wrote. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, sure. You said, yeah, I have a question about my love life. I'm single and searching but men are intimidated by me due to my mainly independent financial situation. I can fix things around the house and men at work talk to me like one of the guys. It's not like you're not having the connections with men that you're wanting. Uh, correct, yeah. I don't know if I need to tone it down, meaning like I really can, you know what I mean, like fix things, like, like plumbing, like things like that. 
um, because I was a landlord. So some men I find that they're intimidated by, and then there are men that just want to be my friend. You know what I mean? Like coworker, like talk. So yep. I just want to see if um, what they could see in regarding to my love life and if I need to tone down that, like, the, how can I say, the opposite side of me. Like, I am compassionate. I am feminine. But then there's a masculine side to me when there's work that needs to be done. Can I esteem it? Anything like that. Mowing the grass. Yeah. All right, practitioners, let me know by raising your hand in Zoom that you are ready to answer. Great, great. Oh, Sandra, yeah, yeah, we wanna be able to figure out, can you see how to raise it in Zoom too? Oh, you can go first, but it should be under reactions yeah. or if the reaction is at the bottom of reactions, there's usually a raise hand. Right, make sure you can find it. All right, let's get you up on screen and then, so we'll have Sandra and then Lisa and then Henry and Audrey. And my aim is I'll have whoever's answering um, be spotlighted and then I'll start to move up the next person as uh, the three minutes kind of approaches. So we all kind of, help each other with that. All right, great. The first thing I want to say is never tone your light down. Never, <laughs> ever let anyone in your life dim your light. Your light is your gift to the world. And if there's somebody who comes across, it, whether it's a man or a woman or whatever, I spent a lot of my life in management and uh, was a strong woman and had to be strong to do what I did. Um, you, you have gifts to give by that light. So really step into it and own it. And if somebody is intimidated by it, just say, I love you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> because yes. they're not the one for you. As a strong woman myself, I had to really own that the only kind of people that I want in my life, whether it's a girlfriend or a guy, is somebody who appreciates my light and um, is willing to help me shine even brighter. So they're out there. Uh, you look a little bit young. And so sometimes the men, when they're young, haven't got to that place of self-esteem enough. It takes a really confident man because of how they've been programmed in this world. This is how men have to be. They have to take control. You can't do more things than I do, you know, especially traditional male things, which is a lot of hogwash. So I encourage you just, girl, let your light shine so bright that everybody around you can step into that light and be better because of you. That's that's what I have on my Facebook page <laughs> is your light shines so bright that anybody who comes near you benefit from it. Does that really awesome? <clears throat> that is awesome. I wanna I wanna show you guys my face real quick, but um I'll be 51 oh. um, <laughs> this month. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be 51 but I'm a I'm a nurse so I really don't want to you know advertise you know myself so yeah so it's like I got the youth and then I got the little manly man thing going on but you know it is what it is what are you gonna do yeah but hi guys this, these are my reading glasses I'm sorry I was writing writing what you were saying down <laughs> it's great to see you thank you for coming on screen no problem Thank yeah, you. And, and just start, Thank you so much. start visualizing that there is somebody out there whose light is strong and who can you can start combining your strong, beautiful, wonderfully loving lights. Thank you. That's my that's I hope that helps. It does. It does. I appreciate Great. it. Thank you so much, Sandra. Great. Like Sandra. All right, Lisa's up next. Hi, Lisa. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm just feeling a lot of energy moving through me right now. Um, a lot of energy around my heart. So I'm just going to go for it. Um, I did write some things down, but going for it for me means that I'm going to channel and I, I don't know what I'm going to do with my hands, but um, 
So the first thing that I wrote down is that your mind is being freed from your throat. So if that needs to be explained in a minute, I can do that. Uh, or hang on, they're saying it now. The mind being freed from your throat means that your throat has a has a verbiage. Okay, the verbiage that you use is um, it's tricking your mind into believing things that aren't really true about yourself. So I'm getting that it's the masculine part of you, that you're using this word masculine because you're a strong and powerful and independent woman. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're masculine. So I want to explain that just a little bit, that, that it doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't some truth to that, but that, sorry, um, your heart is freeing itself through everything and all of who you are. So the idea that you're masculine and telling yourself that that's why these men are not wanting to be with you in a different kind of way, it's just not true. So you can set that aside and, and tell yourself that you're a hot, sexy mother of a living woman goddess in this planet yeah. world right now. <laughs> Yeah. And Thank that if, if, if a man has a difficult time with that, part of the reason might, yes, be is that it's because they're, they're contending with the feminine side of themselves. So you represent this amazing, I'm hearing that you're pretty balanced in your masculine and feminine energies. Um, yeah. And that the men that you're maybe attracting or that who are attracted to you are they're like hang on a second do I have the ability to be in the presence of such a powerful woman so yeah do not yeah do not stop do not tone yourself down okay. um so they were also saying that there's that there's a little bit of a hard time you have a hard time with being friends with your mind um that the hardships that you have had are actually kind of holding your heart fractals captive. Yes. So your heart has a fractal system that's like constantly sort of sending out signals and these tentacles and everything. But every once in a while, the hardships, it's like it, they pull back the fractals and sort of tuck them inside of you and you can't, nobody can see that anymore. Yes. So, that so Okay, so so just practice being brave with your heart mm -hmm. fractals, and they keep using that word. They don't use that word with a lot of people, so there that basically implies that you understand that. Yes, I do. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Lisa. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. All right, we've got Henry next. Hey, Dre. Hi, Henry. Hi. 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 So. Uh, couple of things um the nine of earth came up can you see it yes it's beautiful yeah it's so beautiful and the card also talks about um being in a time of struggling of um especially in love and so i think this is like a confirmation card like yes indeed you are and you're uh, you you want something you don't have and that's yeah. You know, and we want, we want all kinds of things, but I mean something significant, you know, like, like a significant other. And then the mm -hmm. other card, so, so I would say this really is a central theme because sometimes we ask a question and it's not really about that question, but it's like mm -hmm. a way of getting there. But I think it's really about that. And then um, I drew this card, which is like seeing beyond. And, uh, and that's exactly what I think here. I'm going to show it to you. So later when you look at this video, yeah. you can really see the card. It's so beautiful. It so is. And beyond. Um, and, and that's what I would say here. So a few things just showed up, you know, such as, you know, you, you asked if you should tone it down. And, and uh, Drea, I was like that you we are we are twins because i spent mm -hmm. so much of my life really until i was 46 which is when i met my now husband and mm -hmm. thinking i i need to tone down but the question is could you even no it would be hard 
<laughs> right. So it's like a question that we ask that kind of doesn't go lead anywhere. So it's just a question that, you know, just giving up on it, give up on asking if you should tone down because it's not like it's an option. You, you, you can, <laughs> you are who you are, who you are, right? And you could yeah. fake it for a little bit, but oh my God, first of all, how would that hurt? Then secondly, it, it's like, you know, like I remember my first husband, he pretended that he loved art and classical music when he liked mm -hmm. car shows and bowling. And uh, that did not go very well for us, right? And, and so mm -hmm. I too felt, you know, I was never going to find someone, but then I did 17 years married, totally in love both of us uh so so let me tell you uh it, yes you're uh 50 plus but um it can totally happen for you any moment but here's what you need rather than yes. toning down um see beyond what society says about who you ought to be and who you shouldn't be as a non-binary person um I, I think like, you know, these gender roles are, you know, they're like archaic, you know, maybe not everyone feels that way, but I feel that way. It's sort of like being a housewife, that's now archaic. So like the idea of like, gotta be masculine, whoa, or I'm gonna be feminine. Mm -hmm. These are kind of performances, <laughs> right? So, yeah. um, so and, and also like, you know, if you are masculine, awesome. Awesome. Somebody's going to be crazy about you for that. <laughs> Lean in, right? So rather yeah. than toning down, what do you see when you see beyond, when you like take a bird's eye view of who you are? What, how lovable are you? How beautiful are you? How vital are you, right? I mean, I, I saw yeah. you for a few seconds and that's what I got. What mm -hmm. do you get when you look in the mirror? Amplify that. Okay. Will do. I see that I still have uh, another journey because I'm comfortable with my self image. I'm comfortable with my self esteem. Yeah. So and then, I, yeah. So where focus does, on the where positive. Does this idea come mm -hmm. from that you should tone down? Um, I think probably, uh, probably my last job. A lot of, of the males talk with me, they treated me like the guys. And I saw that the females at the job, whether it was a doctor or a nurse, they were a little intimidated by it. And that's what made me, you know, like, I guess you could say second guess myself or what have you, you yeah. know, like think twice, but you know, I love seeing me and I'm going to focus on the positive. <laughs> I love that. I that's perfect. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would say the, the best way forward is to you know, love, love yourself even more and like uh, express that even more freely rather than going into the, into one direction, go in the other direction. And, and this what I got immediately one hit, one hit, which was vulnerability. So uh, when you when you allow yourself to be vulnerable, which is the next level of inner strength, right? Yes, when you allow yourself to be vulnerable, then people are vulnerable with you and they don't they don't treat you in this way or that way. They don't treat you like they're intimidated, they don't treat you they don't treat you like you're one of the guys, they treat you like the divine soul you are. That's what vulnerability invites. So that's what, that's the hit I got that for you to, to practice vulnerability. Uh, you know, be as powerful mm -hmm. as masculine as you are now and be so vulnerable. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Henry. All right, Audrey. Hello. Hi, Audrey. Hi. Um, I want to say that uh, what everybody says so far is you know, just wonderful, really precious opinion, uh, advice. But, uh, okay, so I want to say that I see uh, there's very uh, kind of a seriousness about you. Uh, maybe you put a lot of uh, responsibilities on your shoulder. Uh, maybe, you know, in the past, um, you know, traditionally people have told you, oh, we should be this way or should be that way. So uh, there's probably some kind of a great expectation Right? And then so uh, if you meet somebody, uh, I want to say if you give it a little time, if that person doesn't feel right, 
uh, just trust that feeling and just let that go. <laughs> Maybe yeah. that person just isn't the right person. <laughs> uh, but on the other hand, on your own side, I feel that you uh, you want so much to be free because that is that is how you were in probably a previous lifetime or in a spiritual state that you are just this free, spontaneous, like a angel in the sky uh, spreading your wings. But in this physical life, you've had to, you feel like you had to be more heavy, you know, like, oh, I need to go to work, I need to do a good job, mm -hmm. I, need to, I need to find a guy who also has a good job and all of that expectations, right? So I think that there is a lot of that that gives you uh, reason to doubt a little. But I think, uh, you know, of course, uh, your nature, your insight, that inner voice still calls for you to be free, to be like a little birdie or to, you know, have a lot of uh, um, like, oh, let's just talk. Let's just have fun. Let's just go play for the whole day. <laughs> uh, yes. Don't worry so much about going to work and all of that. So, yeah, I think you want to listen to your inner voice. And uh, I definitely see you finding your mate, finding happiness, and finding yourself and being happy with yourself. So I do see that for you. Just keep going. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Leo, just to let you know, I'm an August Leo. So, yeah, <laughs> I am free spirited. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Audrey. Let's see. And next we've got, we've got Sally next. I gotta get your hand down too. Hi, Sally. Hi. Okay, so Hi. I'm gonna be like the devil's advocate here and flip it a little bit. Um, I got, look at these cards. Okay, we got the strength. We got this woman who's standing there with her torch, like don't mess with me, right? We have this lady who's like, I don't have time for your crap. I've just got, I'm too busy doing other stuff, right? Um, yes. and then we have the sun though, right? What she really mm -hmm. wants is this happiness and this abundance. Now, do you have to tone yourself down? No, but I got these two interesting cards, pride and how teachable are you? Here's the wow. question. I know here's, that's why I said, eh, well, so I feel like this is a familial thing with you. So the women in your family either were very strong or they let men treat them in a way that you saw that you were like, I'm never going to let them do that to me. Okay. It just feels, uh, it feels influential in some ways to the point where you're rebelling it. Here's the thing. We don't have to tone down for other people, but sometimes we have to tone down for ourselves. We have to open up and allow somebody to come in. I feel mm -hmm. like some of the men that you're dealing with are a little immature. Um, they're mm -hmm. not on your level. But I just want you to, here's what I want you to think, because we have this card. This is an aha moment. This is a, a card of mental clarity when things come together and you kind of yeah. get that. You know how Oprah used to have that uh, aha moment where things yeah. just clicked and made sense. How teachable are you in terms of everyone has something that they can teach us? We can learn something from everyone and letting ourselves be vulnerable is what is scary. It's not that you don't want to let them help you. It's that you, it, it's, it, it is, it's that you don't want them. It's, you don't have to tone yourself down is what I'm saying to allow help. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. sometimes men want to feel just as needed as we do. Right. And so, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you just have to be okay to let them help you. Right. It doesn't mean that you can't do it yourself and you don't always have to do it yourself. Maybe you just have to say, you know what, if you want to fix that, I'm going to let you fix it, right? Because it's yeah. giving up control. It isn't about toning yourself down. It isn't about not being your authentic self. It's about giving up a little bit of the control and allowing that person to come in and fully love you the way that you deserve to be loved and let them take care of you and protect you in the way that they want to. And you, you don't have to be weaker because of that. That's not a sign of weakness. All right. That's opening up and loving like a child. Right. Even we can even lear learn from children. Right. And we let mm -hmm. children in and we let children in to love us and we don't throw up our guard at all. Right. But when a man yeah. tries to do it, we're like, nope, nope, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. But we know you can do it. Right. And we, but again, it comes down to how much 
you know, how much pride are you exhibiting, right? How much are you being too prideful that you're getting in your own way and you're not allowing anyone to teach you something that they might be able to teach you. So just be open to it. That's the message I got from this. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And you're, you're absolutely uh, right. My mom was uh, the feminine, like the uh, accountant, my dad, blue collar worker, and um, they had property. So I had to learn how to fix it. My dad treated me like, you know, like a tomboy. It's all good. <laughs> but you have to be vulnerable. Sometimes we have to, yes. we have to, let I have people to learn that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thanks. Hi, Ali. All right, we've got Kendara. 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 Is it Drea? Drea? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to give you what I got for you. So the first thing I got was to be the goddess that you are and let your light shine. And because you did grow up in a neighborhood and a family where the women were not encouraged to be strong, there's a part of you that uses the strength to empower and protect yourself, but there's not a need to do that because by just being your beautiful self and not, not toning it down, the people who are supposed to be with you will, and someone yell at us, not a popularity contest, you know. So the thing <laughs> yeah. is, let yourself just do what's comfortable for you. And then I pulled a couple I Ching cards on you, which is a form of reading that I do. And the message I got for you was to just do it slowly, just do what's comfortable for you at the time. And you're going to have people lined up for you. The main thing that you want to do is you want to release the thought about how you think people are perceiving you because nothing could be further from the truth. So we want you to focus more on your heart and less on your head because there's a fine line of empowerment. And sometimes the empowerment is a protection thing. You know, it's great, you're strong, you're competent, but that works in your favor. It really does. Just really, if you let your feeling come from your heart, you're gonna have the right people there for you and you're not even gonna to need to worry about it. I hope yeah. that makes sense and I hope that helps you a little bit. It does. It really does. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's Kendara. Hi, Susie. Susie up next. Hey, Drea. <laughs> hey, how are you? I don't know if anybody's going to see it in the replay. They're going to see me just throw my hands up. It's like, whoop, that was my point. <laughs> whoop, that was my point. So, I love um, it. <laughs> I'll be able to be short. <laughs> what I want to reiterate, what everyone else has said, is that please don't tone yourself down. Please don't because it's the dummying down of oneself that takes away all of your power. And then you're going to wonder what the hell happened. So stay in that, uh, Kendara called it lovely goddess place. Be that goddess that you are. Uh, what else are my notes? Um, I also want to say that vulnerability does not equal weakness. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you are open to someone in whatever capacity, I mean, yeah, if you can, if you can fix the plumbing, fine. But to be vulnerable to someone and to let them see what your true heart is, that's not weak. That's actually, to me, a sign of strength to, to trust somebody that much. And then leading into that is do what you love. Do something that has your passion, that, that just allows you to raise your frequency to, to the point that it all goes out. And you're going to draw those people to you who share that frequency, who share the passion, and who can share your love. It's Aww. whatever you send out is what's going to come back to you. Oh, thank you, Sophie. <laughs> so, yay. And welcome to the 50s club. Over yes, 50 club. Pull up a chair, be comfortable, because I always have snacks, okay? So thank you so much for your question. Oh, thank you, and I hope you have an air conditioner because I'm burning up from menopause. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thanks, Susie. I love your energy. Thank you, Susie. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, let's see, and I'll share a little bit, too. Yeah, and I'm over 50 oh, also, right? Please. There's a whole group of us. Yeah. Um, yes. Let's see. So I got a good, I got a glimpse of your eyes there earlier. So thanks so much for sharing. And it's possible that the three talents that you have 
are called um, Priest Priestess, which is about inspiration, vision, passion, motivation. It's heart-centered. And mm -hmm. Scholar, which is about absorbing information to build knowledge and share knowledge, which is mind-centered. Mm -hmm. And then you either have yourself or you learn from your dad, it could be you, is the Warrior Talent. It's about efficiency, effectiveness, grounding, practicality, and it's body-centered. So not mm -hmm. only might you have a balance of the more masculine considered, you know, like more masculine talents of scholar and warrior, you might have the feminine talent of priest priestess. And so you have a balance of, right, not only masculine, feminine, but also of mind, heart, and body. Yeah. Right? So all these things. And so I think that it's great to date people that are similar to us. So I would want you to date someone that's connected to their masculine and feminine and to their mind, their heart, and their body. Wow. Yeah, thank you. Oh, that was cool. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, so it's however you, so you want to look at however you meet people, if it's in person, mm -hmm. historically in person, or if you meet people online, how much do you share and show your mind, your heart, and your body, and your consciousness, right? Do you have, if you meet someone socially, do you have more real conversation with them and let all those things show in the beginning, right? If you share uh, about yes, yourself online. Yeah. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you want to do those things so that people see that you have all those things and that you're, you're proud of who you are and you show who you are, right? So someone that sees you and who you are and like not someone that just wants to ride in your coattails and have you do all the work of life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So now, so it's like hearing when they're not ready and like turning your attention, going another direction. Mm -hmm. And then also um, if you have the warrior talent yourself, a particular challenge of the warrior talent is that it's really hard to watch someone else do something that doesn't do it as well as you could do. And this goes back to mm -hmm. someone's comment about control. And I'm like forgetting who it was, but that was a beautiful comment too. So yeah, warriors just have a lot of trouble letting things go, right? Priest priestess can see like the best mm -hmm. that something could be and warriors have trouble just letting it go and letting someone discover their own way, you know, and we can get competitive mm -hmm. with people that are similar. Wow. Okay, so it's finding wow. the place. There's like a, the best expression of our talents, whatever they are, is this humble expression of them, where we know mm -hmm. that we're in a journey of doing it better and better. And we trust that we're capable. So you being in that open heart, vulnerable place in your strength, mm -hmm. right? And your softness, right? It's balance again. That's how you'll find this great person. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank so not you. about turning down your light at all. It's letting all of your light show, letting all of your light be yeah. Yeah, and lots I of will. nodding. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you are so welcome. That was awesome. That was All right. Awesome. Well, let's see. So practitioners, is there anything else that anyone wants to? Oh, Susan's got a little bit. All right, let's get Susan up here next. Go ahead, Susan. I just have a, a little mantra and hopefully I can piece it together. Um, so it makes sense. But I, I just, I was like, Susie, it's like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Everybody's like, I love how the synchronicities just kind of like all flow with, within each other. And it just creates this kind of beautiful story. Um, but I pulled several cards and just kind of picking out um, some main messages and themes from them. I kind of created this mantra. So hopefully this resonates and this is helpful for you or somebody here. <laughs> um, but uh, it starts, let's see. Um, I am powerful beyond measure. I am loved, I am safe, and I belong. I am aligned with my soul's purpose. I soar into limitless love, light, and joy. My light radiates through my life and the world around me. My heart is open and leads the way to abundant opportunities and possibilities that await me. So I oh, that was beautiful. That, that was helpful. And, um, you know, when you come across things, I would, one thing that's been helpful for me in my journey yeah. is I tend to take it personally. And as others have mentioned, it's a lot of times it's not about you. And you think, well, if I adjust me, if I, you know, fix me or do something different with me, then others will, um, will approve, right? And we're kind of like seeking others' approval. And, um, you know, really just being within your own self and, and in your own power and strength and love and light. And so when I come across something like, like that, I think, what else could this mean? What else could this mean? Um, so maybe just asking, you know, when you come across, you know, the guys are treating me like guys, what else could this mean? You know, 
that they feel comfortable about me maybe you know um, i don't want to mm. give you the answers but maybe just asking the question and when you find in your when you come into that place of self-doubt and you're looking like oh this is an obstacle i'm never going to get what i'm looking for what else could it mean maybe it, that obstacle is really an opportunity to shift your perspective to to view from a different lens um, so thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your journey and being brave and and asking your question and i wish you the very 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 best oh thank you susan i appreciate that that's awesome thank you everyone Thanks, Susan. I appreciate it. This was an oh. awesome, awesome reading. Kendara's yeah. got something too. And like I have something else I want to say too. Let me um, okay. get Kendara up here. Oh, well, Kendara, you have to have your video on for me to put oh, you up front. Sorry. Of course. Sorry about that. I wanted to run and get my I Ching cards um, because I figured I would I would pull a card on it for you, Drea. And the I Ching's um, a form of readings that I love to do. And there's 64 mm -hmm. hexagons. And the one I pulled for you was Inner Truth. And this is what it mm -hmm. looks like. Wow. Um, isn't it beautiful? It is. And, it the, is. and the key words are wisdom of the heart, just trusting what you know to be true. Insight, mm -hmm. intuitive knowing, and penetrating illusion. So if you allow yourself to go with what you know is right and what feels right for you, everything else is going to fall into place. And can I add a little something? Um, I'm a psychic. Yes. Um, and I get ages for people. And what I got for you was that at age 22 is very pivotal and transformational in the decisions that you made at that time. So just go back and think about where you were at that time and maybe yes. what's no longer working for you and you will have people lined up wanting to date you. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you that was awesome yes yes 22 that is correct yes <laughs> thank you oh that's amazing <laughs> great thanks kendara yeah, and then thank you. just a little bit i want to add and see if we if practitioners if you see something else in here that i'm not seeing so from all the things that you've shared it sounds like if they're too weak there you see them yeah. as not strong enough yeah. So if they're like acting too feminine and if they're too tough, so like too masculine, then it's not that they're not respecting you. And if they attempt to find a middle ground where they're respectful of you and they see you as an equal, then you think they're seeing you as a guy. So there's mm -hmm. no way for them to show up. No, it's kind of hard because um, the men that I do date, they're more uh, feminine. They have been in the masculine. past. That, that's a setup yeah. so that you'll, mm -hmm. that's a setup. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's a setup so that you're the one that has to take care of everything. So just watch out. Um, yeah, so I want to encourage you that some of these people that treat you like a friend, treat you quote, mm -hmm. like a guy, that there might be much yeah. more potential in them than you realize. Um, Look for the ones that also can meet you emotionally. Um, right. The strong one that treats yeah. you like a, like a guy that treat that meets mm -hmm. you emotionally or has grown themselves enough. They meet you emotionally. And yeah, that's where there's a lot of potential. And um, I encourage you to, to make up these characters of what it might look like for someone that shows up with the right balance. What are the things they do? How do you feel when you interact mm -hmm. with them? Give yourself some spaciousness around what this is so you can identify it when it shows up. You oh, can see I'm how sure close well. people are to it. You know, if they're way off there, but if they're kind of close, like, hey, let's engage that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I see what you're saying. I do, I do, I do. Uh, great, and um, Susie and... Okay. Henry both had something to say about this also. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, with Lorelai, thanks Lorelai, but with you listing that out, we can see the, the kind of people you don't want, Drea. Yes. Again, focus on what you do want. Uh, oh, I apologize for not remembering which practitioner said, focus on the positive. What do you want? Got it. Yeah. And I, yeah, I will focus on what do I want instead of um, accepting what is uh, workable what is yeah. uh, i'm trying to be politically correct but yes, yes just as we have asked you not to tone down i'm also asking you yes. not to settle for less than Thank what you, you deserve settle. yes, yes. Mm. Okay. You settle. i appreciate Great. that <laughs> and henry um, sorry i forgot one thing i spoke for so long but i forgot one thing which is um 
see if there's a discrepancy between what serves you and what you want. And I'll give you an example, oh. right? I'll give you a very brief example. Mm -hmm. I met my now wonderful, amazing husband. I wanted very sparkly, shiny people that impressed me and I got mm -hmm. my defenses. And then I made a drastic change and said, uh, th those are not actually guys that make me happy. Those are not actually people that make other people happy. So what, what would actually serve me? Is somebody kind, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to allow that person to show up in my space. And if I hadn't made that change, my husband could, would have never even gotten the first interview because he was shy, he was quiet, he was not sparkly and smart, <laughs> with clever, he was none of that. He was very, very reserved and very quiet. And, and, and there was an amazing gem right there. So you may wanna look at uh, what you like because it may not be in alignment with what serves you. Um, got it. I got it. And you can change what you like because what you like is almost always conditioned. Mm -hmm. mm, powerful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Henry and Lisa. Yeah. Thank you, Henry, because it, it goes very much in line with what I wanted to reiterate that I said earlier about what are you screaming for? So we're, we're very conscious up here for the most part, but what, where we scream from is usually down here somewhere. And the screaming sort of gets shift off to the side somewhere where we're like, no, 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 this is what I'm looking for. So it's just another way to kind of say what's already been said, but yeah. it, it's helping me to realize in myself also. So I just wanted to say it out loud so that I could um, kind of uncover what that means. Like not, why are you screaming? But what is it that you're actually telling the universe, you know? And, and how do we get there, you know? Like how do we uncover that part of us that's actually screaming? <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Go ahead. Yep, that's great, Lisa. Sort of like, instead of what do we want, what's wanted? What is wanted? That is yeah. correct. Sandra. Hi. Yeah, I'll be quick. Lorelai reminded me um, a lot of times in feng shui, I work with uh, people that want to attract love into their lives. And the first thing I have them do is to look at a list of attributes. What are the five most important attributes that the person that I want to be with? has and if they don't have them they're deal breakers and then you turn it on yourself and say okay i need these five characteristics kindness honesty whatever you turn it back on yourself and say am i all of those things am i really centered in all of those things because then you will attract a man that has those attributes because he or she I, I'm assuming that person will will want the same things from you. And so, you know, people don't have to be exactly the same. We don't even want them exactly the same. But the attributes that you're really looking for, honesty, integrity, compassion, um, you know, confidence, whatever they are, are you really aligned and centered in them so that you can attract that person? Got it. No, that's what I need to do. So you open, all of you open up, like, I don't know, like my mind and my heart and making me uh, think, you know, uh, beyond, you know what I'm saying, um, who I am and, and what I am looking for. Because you're right. It's like, um, I settle, if you will. I settle. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Got a lot to think about ready because if you're centered in those things yourself you'll just attract that person <laughs> you won't yeah. have you'll go oh here he is <laughs> yeah 
Thank you. Oh my gosh, you guys moved me. Oh my gosh. We got a couple more things. Me a lesson. Okay. I'm gonna say one thing while Sally, turn on your video. Yeah, great. So you said that I settle, so change that. I used to settle. I used to settle, that's right. I used to settle. Yeah, you're absolutely right. All right, <laughs> Sally. Like most of them will have like two attributes and not five. You're right. <laughs> that, was, that was then, this is now. Yes, that, you're right. I used to settle, not anymore. I'm sorry, Sally. Do you know why you settle? Because it's an easy out. If you don't yeah. really like the person, well, then you get to not really, you know what I mean? You get to push them away even mm -hmm. quicker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's an even better defense mechanism. Because I think what you really need to, to think about with this aha moment is where mm -hmm. this is coming from. What place is this, is this coming from? If you know, like I said before, is it your true authentic self or is it a defense mechanism? Mm -hmm. Though it isn't even toning down because there's, you know, like look at Michelle Obama. She's a very strong woman, right? And she yeah. allowed her husband to love her, but she wore the pants in that family. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. when you settle, it's because that's easier for you to run from. Because if you mm -hmm. find that perfect man, then what? Now you got to love them and you got to let them love you back. So you're like, well, now what do I do? <laughs> got it. Got it. I am getting in my way, in my own way. Yeah. That that's so tense. That's you're, tense. you're keeping a bubble. Yes, I was getting people. in my own way. <laughs> you're keeping a bubble around you to keep yourself safe from being loved. Wow. That's what it is. Wow. Yeah. It just blew my mind. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sally. All right. Kendara's got something else, too. I was sitting here and I got the best exercise for you to do. And it's from a woman named Lynn Grabhorn who wrote a book called Excuse Me, Your Life is Waiting. So you write down your goal, which is I want a loving relationship. And then you yeah. list everything you want to avoid. Not what you don't want, because the mind doesn't register negatives. Everything you want to avoid. And then you list everything you want in this loving relationship. And then for at least 16 seconds, and I don't know why it has to be, it can be more, but for at least 16 seconds, you talk about it in the present like you already have it. And the last step is you let it go knowing it's going to happen. It's really powerful. It's from a book called Excuse Me, Your Life is Waiting. So again, you think of the goal, you think about what you want to avoid, then what you want, and then you talk about it in the present, and then you let it go. It's amazing. Wow, I will. I will. I have a whole list of things I have to check myself. You know what I mean? Like, like think about it, write it down, and see if this is truly what I want. I appreciate that. And I will. Excuse me, my life is waiting. And it is. It is. Excuse but it's not going to wait. Your no life more. is waiting, not my life. It's oh, the same oh. it's no big. I, I think you'll find it. No, you. no problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. That was great. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you, everyone, practitioners. I know all sorts of juicy wisdom in here so this is great for everyone and great for the recording of everyone that watches later thank you drea for letting us go deeper and deeper and playing thank you thank you everyone i appreciate that i have a lot of uh, soul searching and this is this is a good activity for me it really is thank you so much i appreciate everyone oh you're very welcome all right we've got someone else in line all right victor What is your question? Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Um, I'm just, um, uh, my, my question is, um, I'm, I'm just feeling really overwhelmed in life right now. And, um, I'm having a lot of um, uh, I guess medical problems around uh, a recent cancer diagnosis and I am um, and I'm trying to 
I guess, stay hopeful. Um, and it's hard sometimes. And I guess I am hoping to get any tips on how I can uh, keep a positive outlook on life. Thanks, Victor. Yeah, a very big relevant other question from the first one. Yeah. I believe we will have things to share with you. And yeah, hands up already. And I'm thrilled with who's first. Let's get Susie in here for you. Thrilled. Okay. Um, Victor, I totally understand where you're coming from. I am a cancer survivor, and I believe Kendara is also. Did you say that, Kendara? Oops, sorry. I apologize. I know somebody did. But um, my story in a nutshell, I had colon and breast cancer, three primary sites. I am carrying forward a genetic predisposition that they couldn't find. I went through 17 months, chemo and radiation and surgery and chemo and surgery and radiation. And I'm here. I have my series of merit badges, you know, the neuropathy and the, and the colostomy bag and all of that. But what I did at the very beginning for my case, because my mother and my sister had colon and breast cancer respectively, I said, I, I determined to change the end of the story. There is a different ending for the story for you. I cannot emphasize enough to um, find someone to support you. There were folks who came into my house and started talking about what their thoughts about chemo were. And I looked at them and I said, not in my house, not right now. I had to stand for, up for myself in that respect. Um, you will get a lot of information coming at you from people who read it through a meme or read it from some sort of article they, they didn't vet. I would like to also tell you about what I learned was to have a concentric, concentric circles of support. You have those, you're in the middle, you have that group around you. For me, it was three people, my best friend, my husband, and my youngest sister. Those were the people who could talk to me about anything and I could talk to them about anything. And anybody who was on any further out concentric circle, the further out in that, in that layout there were, the less they were able, uh, the less welcome they were to dump their stuff on me because I was so entrenched in this experience. Okay. Um, we can, you, you can take time to talk to the cancer. Somebody once asked me, why can't you love the cancer? And I said, excuse the <laughs> word, but are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> cancer has decimated my family. There is no way. There is no way, but I loved myself enough to understand that this was an experience. Okay, fine, I signed on for it, but this is an experience that I had and that I was going to get through. And I ask you to determine that for yourself. Are you going to get through? I believe you can. And on a personal non-marketing note, call me. Talk to me somehow and I will be there for you and help you look at this in that way, just as a cancer survivor, not as a practitioner right now. But find somebody who will support you, who will advocate for you, because right now your brain is like, oh man, what's going on? Especially when you first get the diagnosis and then you can determine how you're going to do it. Um, advocate for yourself. Doctors don't always know everything. They know what they've been taught. And so having someone with you to reiterate the stuff, I have really bad neuropathy because the doctor just blew it off. I don't want that to happen to anyone else. It's, it's dreadful. Um, I, you know, right now when it comes to cancer diagnosis, it, I don't, I don't want to get glib about it and say, oh, this is what it's about and the metaphysical meaning of it. This is your body doing something really weird and unpleasant and it's it's growing at an exponential rate. Um, I, I don't know. I'm really just email me and let's talk. And I'll be happy to walk with you through this. Because it's I don't wish it on anybody. 
and not even people I don't like. I don't wish it on anybody. So trust that you will get through it. Trust that you will have a presence of mind so that you can make some decisions, but also trust you're going to have really bad days and you'll have good days, but you have people around you who will love you and who you can trust. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I have for you right now. And if I come up with something else, I'll let you know, but yeah, I'll put my email address in the, in the chat for you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I love to, I love to email you. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, you're not alone in this. I can't say that enough. You're not alone. Okay. So thanks, Victor. I appreciate your vulnerability in sharing that because yeah, it's a booger. Thanks, Susie, for going first. Audrey. Hello, Victor. Um, I want to tell you that um, I saw this image for you as a turning point. It's like a road that just turned to a different direction. Uh, today, I have a spirit guide with us, uh, a lady spirit. And she wants to tell you that you have come a long way. Maybe uh, perhaps you worked really hard or that your life was uh, stressful. There were things uh, in your life that was just too heavy. And then so it's almost as if you're taking a turn now. You're taking a vacation or you decide, okay, my life is going in a different direction. So please, um, you know, I want to really tell you that this is a, a good thing. <laughs> I'm sorry that the cancer is not a good thing, but your life direction is a good thing that it has changed. So at this point in time, uh, I see it still as a one, two, three. You know, it's as if uh, you're going to change some of the details, uh, your life philosophy at this point. Uh, you're changing that, and then you're going to go through this period, and then you're going to go to another period. So you are doing this modification in your life right now. Uh, overall, it is to condition yourself to relax. Take a lot of a deep breath, enjoy the sun, enjoy the, the, the grass, the roses, or, you know, enjoy everything, right? And you ask, how can I make it through? How can I survive? And this is how you survive, is to take in life. Instead of saying, I give up, you want to start living. And uh, the way that you can start living is by having some new friends or new energy come into your life. New friends is a good thing, or other people who are of relationship with you, but in a healthy way. So I definitely see you uh, taking a vacation. I, I see you uh, probably making more friends with a younger crowd or, uh, you know, even uh, boosting your love life and all of that good stuff. So it is very, very good. Just know that the turning of the life is wonderful. This is the best news that you need. Uh, this is what you need to do to change what was uh, stagnant in your life before. Best of luck to you. Yeah, I, I, um, I definitely feel like there have been a lot of positive changes in my life, but I kind of feel a little bit thrown off by the whole cancer thing. Like it kind of feels mm -hmm. like it kind of, yeah, the, but there are definitely, I definitely feel like I've reached a turning point and so many things are changing right now for me. Let me just add that very quickly, I want to give time to other people to, to speak to you. But uh, I would say that the cancer is the way your body tells you that it's overburdened. Uh, that everything that you received or that you have done accidentally or not knowingly to your body has been uh, wrong in a probably in a wrong way, accidentally or unintentionally or unknowingly. But this is a good sign that you are now learning, that you are becoming aware so that you can change that course so that you can do something different. So I'm, I'm sure you can do it. You, yeah. This is a very good place to receive the message, to be aware, and to go on that merry way. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks, Audrey. 
I'm going to jump in and share just a, a little bit. So I love that Audrey was using the phrase about turning and turning towards. Um, one of the phrases that you said, Victor, was I'm trying to stay hopeful. So I get where you are right now and you don't feel as hopeful as you want to feel. And for me, anytime I say or I hear anyone else say the word try, there's a lot of meaning for me in the word try. So for example, try to touch your earphones. You're touching your earphones. Try to touch your earphones. Try, you're touching still, just try. Right, exactly. So whenever <laughs> we're trying, there's, a, there's energy towards and energy away from. So anytime we hear ourselves, it lets us know that we're, we're pushing away from or pulling away from whatever it is that we believe we want. And so by saying it and thinking it that way, we're giving that message and reinforcing that message to all of ourselves and to the universe. So I would encourage you as you hear yourself, if you say that, I'm turning towards hopeful. I'm turning towards being hopeful. I'm becoming hopeful. Any of those kinds of things shift you towards hope. Becoming, turning towards. Right. Okay. Or I, I choose to find my way through. I choose to notice the openings. Right. The words I choose is that it's finding the willingness in yourself. I'm willing to be hopeful. I'm willing to find my way through this. And I can write these to you in the chat afterwards, too. And then Henry's going to be next. Victor, thank you for sharing something uh, like this that's very challenging. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, being vulnerable like that. I'm not the only one saying that, uh, especially because uh, there's a lot of baggage with this kind of diagnosis. The culture has a lot to say about it. And so I, I really commend you for being willing to put this into space and not holding back and not second guessing. So I pulled a, a, a number of cards right from the beginning before I heard everyone else because I, I just wanted something that's not influenced. So uh, I'm, I'm not gonna say what the cards are because I, if you're not a Torah reader, it won't mean much to you, but I'll say what they'll mean. So I'm gonna look down because I'm reading them. So the first card really makes clear that you're in a, in a very difficult place where you will kind of want to curl up. And, uh, and so you're not, you're here and actually like reaching out, which is much, much bigger a deal than you may realize, because it would be very easy to say it, it's kind of hopeless. And what could anyone say that would make a difference? And you don't have that mindset, but maybe sometimes you do. And so that's something to be aware of. Then the next card uh, shows me that you, you asked a question, how can you stay positive? Is this, is this pretty much what you asked? Um, yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I remember that correctly. So um, the best way to stay positive is with uh, a beginner's mind. And uh, the way I see beginner's mind is to have a child's mind. What do you hear when you hear child's mind? Um, uh, what do I hear? Um, what do you think I mean when I say child's mind? Um, I guess I just, I guess I just sense of if this feeling of freedom, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so then the thing to do, so thank you for saying that. And I would agree with that. So um, the sense I get is watch some children. I think it's still summer. So there are all these summer pools. Uh, are you in Seattle? I'm in Portland. I in Portland. I don't know. Do you have places where like wading pools for toddlers? Um, maybe some places. Yeah. I can check it out. It's a, an amazing place to see uh, very small children at play and uh, and this will teach you how to have a child's mind. So, um, and perhaps even maybe volunteer if that's something within the scope of what you can do to see very small children because what the difference between adults and small children is that small children move through their feeling states incredibly fast. 
They're like, something happens. They ball their head off. Something takes their attention and off they go. And they're like totally into something else. That is a child's mind. And so that can bring you back to the present, back to the present. Because as an adult mind, what you do is you have an experience and then you have a bunch of thoughts about it. And then you're spiraling with these thoughts. So how can you stay positive by not spiraling, but moving through your feeling states, shock or suffering, or you're aware of your situation and you have thoughts about what that means for your life. And then you compare it to what you had expected for your life and all of that. And if you, if you cultivate a child's mind, then you don't allow that to go on and on. You look outward outside of yourself and you go, what else could take my interest? So, by watching children is the best way to do it. And this is just literally where you are. I wanted you to see this one. This is one of my Oracle cards. You're in uncharted sea. So that's literally where you are. So be in this boat and you'll be on the ride. And if you have a child's mind, that means you don't know what's on the horizon. Whereas where your sorrow comes from now or your suffering comes from now is that you know what's on the horizon. So unknow it because you literally can't be sure. Henry, that's great, thank you. Yeah, and is there anything else you wanted to share finishing up? Yeah, I just wanted to know if this spoke to Victor. Uh, he, yeah, that sounds just like, yeah, I guess I, I, could, I, I find myself getting caught up in I guess I, I find myself alternating between being or feeling good and being hopeful about the what the outcome could be, but uh, other times I'm just really afraid and and I guess I need to to just stay open then to the fact that anything could happen and. When, and yeah. I, yeah. They say, yeah, when you feel afraid, that's when you surround yourself with the, the group of people, the small group of people that Susie mentioned. And that's when, like Henry shared, you go watch the kids. We've got Sally up next. Hi, Victor. So um, I'm the other person that had cancer. <laughs> um, so two years ago, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Um, and I was the worst um, was seven months. That was my prognosis. Um, and even the best <laughs> was, uh, I think it was 25% for two, 10 years and 50% for five years. That, that was what um, that I was given, basically. Um, my family all said, oh, no, they told you to go home and prepare. You know, I didn't hear any of that. I didn't hear, I didn't, I, I didn't even really comprehend the prognosis until like, year, like, not years later, but months later, right? Because I was like, no, I'm not going to die. I told my oncologist I refuse to die. Now, I'm not trying to tone it down for the people that have passed from cancer, right? At the end of the day, we don't have control of what's gonna happen. But I can tell you that a negative mindset is not going to get you to a healing place, okay? A positive mindset might not get you cured, but a negative mindset is definitely not gonna get you where you need to be, okay? But at the same time, you have a lot of emotions to process and it's completely natural for you to be going back and forth. Okay. But on the times when you're starting to doubt yourself, you just have to get yourself back. You have to snap back out of it and you've got to stay positive, right? You've got to think to yourself that you have no control over it and that worrying isn't going to do anything for you. Okay. And fear isn't going to do anything for you. So you have to just, because what's going to happen is you're going to worry and you're going to not enjoy your life that you do have. You know what I mean? We don't, none of us know what, how much time we have left. We could walk across the street and get hit by a car. We don't know. We have to enjoy every minute. Like it's, you know, not our last, but you know, we just have to enjoy our life. When I looked at your cards, the interesting thing about it was um, we got two cards, 32 and 23, which were the almost, you know, reverse numbers. One says waiting and one says patience. Okay. This is what I'm saying. It's going to be a waiting game and you're going to have to have patience. We're not going to, you're not going to know the answers. And sometimes even just waiting for scans and stuff is going to be super stressful, but you can do it. Okay. When I first found out, 
I um, started an Instagram for my cancer and I named it Sally's New Beginnings because I was said, I said, not only am I going to be cured, I'm going to have a whole new life. I'm going to appreciate things and I'm going to see things in a whole new way. And I do. I opened up to all my gifts. I stop. I don't work anymore. Like at a, you know, a nine to five job, I'm doing this and my life is way better. I will be honest with you. I, I, I hated my birthday for years and years and years. I love my birthday. I can't wait for my birthday, right? Every little thing that used to be annoying to me is just, I mean, like I said earlier, I don't care how much weight I gained. I don't care what I look like. I don't care if there's gray. I don't care if I have makeup on because you know what? I wake up every day and I breathe. And you're going to get to that place where you're going to appreciate so much about your life, okay? But the other card I got was Phoenix Rising, okay? This is a powerful, powerful sign. You will rise from this. Okay. And you have the ability to do that. You have to be care. Um, you have to take care of your body and you have to be gentle with your body and you have to be understanding with your body. And you have to come up with a plan that no matter what, you're going to do whatever it takes to get past this. And the other advice I have is not to always listen to your doctors, do research, find alternatives, find people that will listen, you know, be your best advocate. But also what I got was admiration, okay? Again, you have to admire yourself. You have to always admire yourself for the strength and find other people like survivors like us who you can admire, who you can look up to, okay? And don't focus on the people that haven't made it. Focus on the people that have, okay? Because that's what's gonna give you the hope. But also um, the one theme with this was there was three twos and five threes. And they're all angel numbers. They're very powerful angel numbers that will let you know that you're being divinely guided and divinely protected through this journey. That no matter what, you have people up in, you know, beyond that are protecting you and watching over you. And they are going to do everything in their power to help you through this. And they won't give up unless you do. Okay. And again, you can message me as well. And, um, you know, what I would say also, though, don't go on all those support groups. You know, you can go on the support groups for what you need the support groups for, but take a break because you'll see stuff that you will just bring you right back down. And some people get sucked in that. You know what I mean? Like they get you sucked see in things this, or like, 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 like if someone passes away or if someone says, uh, you know, it, it can suck you into a negative space, right? Where you're like, oh no, this person didn't make it or that. But again, that's going to happen because that's just life. But you need to be around the positivity. And those groups are great when they're great, but they're not when they're not. Does that make sense? So yeah. if you feel yourself getting overwhelmed by what you're seeing or hearing, just take a step back and do something that you love and enjoy and talk to someone that's going to make you feel better instead of worse. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, th I, think, I think right now I've, I'm maybe because it's so new, I still feel maybe even a sense of denial or mm -hmm. a sense of like, um, I'm still in denial. Is, is, and you this, might, yeah. It's normal. And you know what, if you keep that denial, then that's going to be what propels you through. Okay. Because if you refuse to accept it, you're going to do whatever you have to do to fight it and win. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's sometimes when I'm out with my family, I'll be honest with you, two years later, there's sometimes I'm, I'm out with my family and I stop myself and I remind myself that I had stage four cancer. And then I'm like, why are you doing that? Do you know what I mean? Like, why are you doing that? But I'm in such denial. I've gone through it this whole time that I have to remind myself sometimes, but it keeps me grounded. But you're going to process a thousand different emotions every single day. And it's okay. You just have to process them. Right. But, but keep your mind on this Phoenix rising, right? Because I really feel this is a sign for you. This is a sign that you, you have the, everything in you to, to fight this and win. Okay. I hope that helped. Thank you, Sally. Thank Alexandra. you. Yeah, Victor, I'm, I really appreciate you sharing also. I am also a cancer survivor two times. And so I'm going to speak from that place. And I love the, the uh, feedback that you've been getting. 
Um, cancer comes, it's very loaded. It's a disruptor, number one, and it comes with this whole huge baggage of fear and anxiety. And the first time I got cancer, I had, and I had stage two cancer, so my prognosis the first time was really good. But I had people who avoided me and walked across the street when they heard I had cancer. I had people call me up on the phone and say, I heard you're dying. Just <laughs> a, a ton of fear in my direction. And you have enough fear anyway. So what I learned from the first time was to surrender. Um, to surrender to what is. And I'm going to disagree just a little bit about denial in the sense that we with cancer, at least for me and for most of the people I talk to, we go between denial. It's not true. It can't be happening. Why did it happen to me? What did I do to do this? And fear. And both of them paralyze us. The, uh, the denial is denying for me that you're going to have that it's a death sentence, even if it's stage four. And so if you say, it might be a it might be a death sentence. It might not, as so many people have said. We don't know what the outcome is, but if we decide that it's you know a death sentence, and my brother had cancer and died, and he did that. He decided he was just going to die. I'd call him up, say, "How you doing?" He'd say, "I'm dying," and and he did. <laughs> and so, if you surrender to it, the facts are what you can't change is that you have cancer. You can't change that. So surrender to it. Now what do you do? And what are the steps that you go through? If the fear comes up, say, okay, I'm feeling afraid. What's this about? And that can take you out of the fear and into solutions. And so to stay positive, I would just say, okay, I'm feeling afraid. What's this about? And maybe it was somebody had been talking to me or I'd been watching TV and somebody was dying in this medical show or something, whatever it was. And I go, oh, that's not even about me. That's not even my fear. And so then I could let it go and I could ask myself, what are the solutions? Where can I go from here? What can I do? So yeah. surrender to what is. There are certain things that you can't change. And then um, uh, move into solution, move into the resources that you have. And I love what Susie said about the concentric circles. The second time I got cancer, it was seven years later. And it wasn't stage four, but it was stage three, colon cancer. And I decided I was only going to tell the people that were healers and that were fearless with me and that would be my fearless support team. I didn't tell anybody else. And that's not a, a thing that many people can do, but I decided I wanted people around me to support me who had the same mindset that I did. And I was really careful about that and conscientious about it. You might have already moved past that point. I had that choice at the beginning because of my previous experience. Um, and you can choose to tell people, stop. When they start being negative and fearful with you, just say, stop. Can't handle that right now. Talk to you later. And, and just take control. That's one way that you can take, take control of your situation. Refuse to allow other people's fear to come into your environment and then deal with the fear that you have yourself naturally. And remember that no matter what I or anybody else says, I love this, I, um, Plato said this, is that <laughs> opinion is the lowest form of knowledge. Mm. So really be conscious of whose opinion you let into your world and into your mind and into your heart. Move into your heart, let your heart guide you. And that includes the doctors because the doctors sometimes are very biased. So I don't remember who it was who said, explore all the avenues that are out there for you uh, and um, don't don't shut anything off and just say the doctors know everything because they don't always. So, 
that's my two cents. Yeah, I, I guess um, maybe just to add some, some more uh, detail. Um, I have a, I have a stage four colon cancer. Um, um, I have a, a, a small tumor on my liver. So I, that, that's what makes it stage four. But I haven't been given a like percentage chance of survival by my doctors. So maybe that's good that they haven't done that yet. But um, I hope that they don't do that. <laughs> it seems really, really intimidating that if they threw a number at me like that, I would be like, what, what, I mean, but um, maybe, um, and I guess maybe I, I have a sense of denial about the aspect of death. Like it kind of feels like I'm not going to die from this or the, like it, it feels like at least the doctors are like, this is going to happen and then this will happen and then this will happen and then it'll all be better. <laughs> but um, Maybe they're, I don't know. I guess that's, that's what it feels like right now. I, and, but I mean, I guess anything can happen, but I mean, I, I, yeah. Surrender to anything will happen and it, I can also survive this and, and come through with flying colors on the other end. And so that's one of the possibilities, you yeah. know, the, the fact that you've got cancer, you can't change that, but the yeah. end result you can. That's all put to possibility. So stay in that. And that's where you stay in hope. That's where you stay positive. And, um, I, you know, try to try to eliminate as much of that noise that doctors will give you, that other people will give you. And um, just say, well, there are always possibilities. So I'm going to defy the possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make a new life, as she just said. <laughs> so I'm going to get through this and make a new life because it's all about possibility. It doesn't have to be a death sentence. Good luck to you, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Sandra. All right, Kendara. Hi, Victor. Um, I'm sitting here and I, luckily, um, I mean, I, I'm not a survivor. I mean, I, I but. I got all this information to just share with you because one of the things you did ask about were tools and just ways to deal with it. Um, what I did get for you was age 12 as being very pivotal and significant in changes in your life, which made you start looking at things and made it harder for you to ask for help. And I kept drawing cards for you and every card I got was wands or swords in reverse. And wands are change and swords are strife. And when a card is in reverse, it means you're affected by what other people think and do and say, which we all are. But one of the big things that stands up is this is a wake up call for you to ask for help. It's you need to be okay asking for help because it, it allows there to be a healing. And then I got to ask you if you do meditate. And if you do meditate, do you meditate? Um, no, but I can. Let me give you. Yeah, I can okay. try to start. <laughs> Let me give you a really quick, quick, quick yeah. exercise because this is a two part suggestion for you. So if you could just sit up straight and close your eyes for a minute and put your feet flat on the ground and your palms up. Now, if you put your tongue very lightly on the roof of your mouth, where the teeth and the soft palate meet, that stimulates your pineal gland, which increases your intuition. Isn't that cool? So I love that. So you're gonna just imagine roots growing out of your feet and you're gonna close your eyes and breathe in the light for a count of five through your nose. And hold it for a count of five. And as you breathe out through your mouth for a count of five, in your head, silently say the word breathing. Just say it in your head. And then breathe in again. And if words and thoughts come in, just watch them and hold it. And as you breathe out, 
silently say the words breathing. And you'll notice how relaxed you're getting. You're gonna do it two more times. You're gonna breathe in and hold it. And as you breathe out, you'll silently say the word breathing. Just say it in your head. And you're gonna do it one more time. So breathe in and hold it. And as you go out, breathe out, just silently say the word breathing and then open your eyes. How do you feel? Good. <laughs> so you can do this. Are you more of a morning person or a night person? Um, I alternate between the two. Okay, well, every night for 15 minutes before mm -hmm. you go to bed or right after you get up, Sit against your headboard in bed with a little timer and time it and just do that. But then have a pen and paper next to you. And you're gonna just ask your higher self, what do I need to know? Or what can you tell me today? Or give me a word. That's so going to relax you. I've got one more really helpful thing, which I think will be something you can use. Are you familiar with the concept of chakras? Yes. Okay, so cobalt blue is the color of the throat chakra. It's for communication. You can create a cobalt blue room in your head and invite anybody dead or alive who you have issues with to come into the room. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna say to them, you're gonna tell them what you, you're gonna tell them how you feel, you know, just in your head. You don't have to build a room. Someone said, do I have to build a room? No, you do not. <laughs> gonna tell them how you feel. And then you're going to let them tell you how they feel. And once they've done, and you may not hear the words, but you'll get the energy. Then you're going to tell them what you need. And then you're going to let them tell you what they need. And then you make an agreement and you shake hands and you leave. Now here's the trick. It's all aspects of you. And it's a very, very powerful thing. So I hope this gives you a little something to take with you. You know, my sister was diagnosed with stage four cancer and she lived so much longer because she just, you know, knew she had it, but then she didn't dwell on it. So absolutely do what you need to do and you'll know what to do, but don't let fear overwhelm you and ask for help, it's okay. And thank you for letting, thank you for letting us read for you and for sharing this. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Welcome. My pleasure. Kandara, yeah, one of the sentences that came to my mind from Kandara's share was if someone in childhood told you that you couldn't or gave you the impression that you couldn't, it might be so important just to practice saying, I can. Right, That's and yourself feel that, I can. Yeah, I have. I feel like um, since getting this diagnosis, I've there's a lot of family members I haven't talked to, and now I'm talking to them again, wow. and they're coming into my life again. So I feel like a lot of things are coming up around <laughs> family for sure. <laughs> so part of that too, I so, think, that this, Susan's yeah. wisdom of who you allow close into your life and who you don't, and the family yeah. members that are not helpful don't need to be here right now. Yeah. yeah, and Lisa is next. Hi there. Hello. Um, I've had a lot of energy moving and um, some notes that I wrote down, but I really feel like everything that was said prior to me starting this with you was exactly the way that it was supposed to be because I am going to ask your permission if I can work a little bit with your heart frequency um, and that everything that everybody has said has prepared you for this moment for me to work a little bit with your heart, um, okay. if, if you're okay with that. Um, I'm first, okay with that. Okay, good. The first message that I got was that you have a heart of gold. Um, and 
but let's see, he has a heart of gold, but you, d you tend to destroy the love for yourself by believing in, in the thoughts that are um, creating the terror and the fear. And I, I don't want to dismiss or diminish the tumultuousness of this experience, um, like everyone has also spoken to already, um, but to um, not only has what everybody said prepared you to feel more free from um, it being so devastating, but um, this is where the morphing mind magic um, starts to, okay. <laughs> I'm hearing the word like perform. So as I, as I tend, as I tend to your heart frequency, um, part of what needs to take place is that there's like a, there's a pathway. So what I'm seeing as I move my hands is, is we're just trying to create a little bit of wiggle room for the goldness um, and the freedom of that gold shining light that's inside of you, that's deep inside of you, that's like ready to come forward and come out through a lot of what everybody has already said. Um, the expression of your life and the, the road that it has turned, the, the path and your path and how it's turned is full force and it's very powerful. So the room that we're creating is a, a like a pathway Okay. That leads through the heart, through the, sorry, through your throat and up into the mind. So in accordance with how the morphing mind works, and now I'm kind of shifting energy around, around your, your head, um, is that when those fearful thoughts and the destructive behaviors that cause you to shut down this gold light inside of you that makes you feel like you've done something wrong to deserve this. Um, a morphing mind is the nature of the soul that shifts and fractally shifts and changes our thoughts through, um, through the behavior and the beauty of your heart's preferences. Your heart's preferences have an energetic force that stretches out beyond you, beyond all time, and fractally shifts and change your thought, changes your thought patterns. This is an energetic force that is in you and it is in all of us, that if we could only just live fully from this place without even so much thinking, about it, but feeling it, feeling yourself forward, feel yourself forward. And I'm feeling the um, sort of the need to jump to my next part of these notes here, um, that, that you will have great joy, great love and laughter. I saw you laughing. So either you have a really good sense of humor, which I, you do, I can tell already, uh, but there's either already, there's someone in your life or someone who will be in your life that will make you laugh a lot. <laughs> so that's my message for you. And um, I'm hearing, please forgive us for um, encroaching on your preferences and your patterns of old belief systems. Um, that's, that's my friends, the um, love warriors saying forgive us for encroaching on this, but um, these, these energetic pathways that we have created are going to reinforce all the love and the generosity of love that you will be giving to this world. Thank you. I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to having more laughter, for sure. <laughs> it's there, it's there. Thank you, Lisa. It's Susie again. So about laughter, Victor. Oh, Susie, we can't hear you well. Fine, technology. <laughs> okay, so um, 
I'm grateful that Lisa mentioned laughter because um, I encourage you to watch things that make you laugh. This is going to shift your energy into the more positive outlook. Um, to be honest, I used to pole dance and that was with my IV. So if you can look at life that way, <laughs> that's great. Don't pull out the lines. The nurses get irritated with that. But looking at those things that, that bring joy to you. Um, my favorite is the old Dick Van Dyke show with uh, Maury Amsterdam and Carl Reiner and all of them. That stuff never ceased to make me laugh. I also discovered Big Bang Theory. Find something to make you laugh. Another practical tip is to bless everything. So you're bringing in divine through your crown, bringing mother earth up from your feet. And what I would do, I would repeat every time I went into the radiation room, that this is God's light coming through me to shrink this tumor, to, to reduce it down. Um, you know, I was on chemo. And so I told the nurses right off the bat, don't call me, don't tell me this is poison. You know, like choose your poison. Let me go mix that up. It's like, don't, don't no don't do that. This is an elixir that is going to shrink the tumors. That's going to heal me. Then if you ever have to go into surgery, then you bless everything. You call in divine and say, guide the doctors and the nurses, all the attendants there to guide their hands strong and steady so that everything works out great. Even the machinery, you know, just bless everything. And, and I love the Phoenix rising card. I love it. And also the fact that Sally called BS on your cancer. I just love that. That made me so happy. So there is a whole lot. And I don't think it's um, blowing sunshine up anybody's backside. And I don't think it is putting rose colored glasses on there. This is the reality of it. You've got it. And you have a lot of, of energy shifting to do. Um, Sally was saying she went to, was it Instagram, Sally? that you went on to? Okay. I was on Facebook telling everybody this is what's going on with me. And I asked them to send energy to me to help me. And it, it sure helped me at least emotionally to get through it. So you do have processing, but I can't say it enough. You've got a whole lot of love. And um, well, now that they're letting me see, you've got so many guides behind you who are there saying, okay, we got called in. We're good. Tell us what we need to do. Tell them what you need them to do. So when you're having those moments of fear, ask them to reach a hand out to you so that you can hold on to it and know. Um, actually, I've been running light language while I've been muted to help you shift and um, to help you process faster with more grace and ease. And I will continue to do that each time I light my morning candle. I'm throwing you in on the prayer pile because we all know now you're going to make it through. You will be changed. There's no denying that, but you'll be changed in such a way that there will be a deeper appreciation for what you have and a deeper connection with divine. So I think everybody would agree. You've got this. It's okay. So many blessings to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks again, Susie. All right, Sally. I just have one more thing to add. Um, it was more of like a tip. Um, one of the things that got me through a lot of my treatments because they were kind of rough. Um, had a, had a brain surgery. I had radiation. I had you know my immunotherapy, fevers, a rash, my whole body. Um, really went through it. Uh, shoulder surgery. I mean, <laughs> you name it, I had it. Uh, oh, MRSA infection for my port. Again, you name it, I had it. One of the things that really got me through was Reiki. Um, I got Reiki a lot. I had people send me Reiki. I um, went to, um, pre well, this was before COVID. You know, I went to a girl who did energy work on me. I honestly feel like it was one of the things. That's why I said, kind of think outside the box. You know, no doctor told me to go get Reiki right? I just did that myself, right? You know, no, no doctor told me to juice vegetables. I did that myself, you know, but the Reiki really, really, really helped me a lot. Um, it helped me through the, the treatment. It helped me through the surgeries. It helped me through 
I, I can't even, and I'm not a Reiki practitioner. I, I kind of took the courses now, but I still kind of need to work on it. So it's not like I'm trying to get you, you know what I mean? To come for my services. I just truly believe in the healing power of it. So it's something to keep in the back of your mind. Um, and what I found out was now it's different with COVID, but um, my, uh, my hospital actually offered Reiki for free. And my, and the hospital even didn't even tell me <laughs> I could have went right when I was getting my treatments for free. And I didn't find out until COVID. So again, find these ways of, you know, people will send it to you. You can maybe have it at the hospital, find a practitioner that will work with you if you can't afford it. You know, there's Reiki um, shares. So yeah, but look into it because it, it literally saved, I think it was part of the reason that saved my life. So I just wanted to share that. Thanks, yeah. Sally. All right, and Kendara. I just want to add one more little thing because it came through so strongly. And when I think it was Susie got the message that you'll be reconnecting with your spirituality, the message came through and also with yourself. You will reconnect with and find your essential true self. And everything is as it is meant to be. So, and can I send you Reiki also? Would that be okay? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'd be honored to do that. I just wanted to throw that in. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. Let's see, and I want everyone just to be able to make a choice here. So I know Lisa, I think Susan hasn't shared yet, so her share is going to be longer. So did you, are you okay waiting a few more minutes or did you want to jump in now? If I could jump in, that would be great. I just, you guys, I got to go. I'm in Montana time zone and been working all day. So just wanted to throw my name out there and that you can find me at lisanolton.com. So it's L-I-S-A-K-N-O-W-L-T-O-N. And I'll just leave it at that. You can see what I do there. So blessings to everyone. And I'll put Lisa's info in the chat again right now too. Thank, thank you so you. much, Lisa. Lisa was the inspiration for this panel again. Thank you so much, Lisa. All right, Ms. Susan. I just... I just noticed that Henry needs to go too. So if you want to give her a second to, to say, I can, yeah, and, we'll my, and my little thing is going to be little. It will, it'll, I'll keep it quick. It's great. Go ahead. Yeah, we'll get Henry on in a moment. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Susan. You can go ahead. Oh, go okay. Ahead. I was just, I want to honor Henry's time. Um, I wasn't sure if I could speak to this or not because my mom is currently going through treatment with cancer. Um, so I know it's not me personally, but it's still has cancer, everybody in the family has cancer. So, um, but one thing, um, it's so interesting because as the panel was talking, um, cards that came up for you were massage, energy work, journaling. Um, so those are, you know, you asked for tools. Those are some things that might be helpful. Um, I love the, the connect to the self, just taking some breaths, using that breath practice that Kandara uh, guided you through, just to ask your highest self, what do I need to know? What do I need to remember to remember? And then also having space for gratitude. It's so easy to get caught up in the whirlwind of the yuck that's going on. Mm -hmm. And just thinking, you know, what is one thing that I'm grateful for? Or maybe three things. And I am so grateful for dot, 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 fill in the blank. I'm so grateful for, I appreciate. And just allow yourself to be in that place of being grateful, and loved and blessed. Um, and a card that came for you is, um, I know there is more to in store for me. I see beyond the limits of my fears and worries. Keep the faith. The most amazing things happen right at the moment you're about to give up hope. So I am, I'm a Reiki master and I would love if your permission to just, you know, can add you to my little Reiki thing that I do in the morning and, and uphold you, you know, through this journey. And um, I, my heart goes to you. Well, thank you, I'd appreciate that. Uh -huh. Thank you, Susan. All right, and Victor, we'll check in and see if anyone has anything else to share, but I wanna give Henry a chance to, to exit first and then I'll bring the rest of the practitioners up here with you. Hey, Henry, go ahead. Okay, um, so all my information is in the chat, and uh, if 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 you can't catch it there, anytime you reach out to Lorelai, you can get it. I just want to say one other thing, 
to you, Victor, rather than talk about myself. Um, a card I pulled is purpose is present. And uh, how I read that is to mean that um, it could easily be that this cancer becomes the center of your life. And I, I think that if you allow yourself to concentrate on your purpose in terms of being of service yourself, imagine that, you know, to enlarge your life. So I felt that that was, I don't want to say more about it because I think you know that I think you know what I mean. So that's all I have. Thank you all. It's been a privilege and it's been a privilege to meet you, Victor. That's Henry. It's been great to have you here. And please do just say your contact info so people can find you if they want to reach out. Um, HenryIndiaHolden.com. And um, if you want to email me, it's uh, Henry at HenryHello.com. But you can just by going to my website, you can find out everything and anything that you need to find out. All right, blessings. Great. Thank you so much, Henry. All right, practitioners, just bring the rest of you here. If there's anything else we want to share with, with Victor. Thank you for sharing, Victor. Really, thank you for opening up and allowing my cat's butt. Thank you for opening up. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you all for hearing me out. Yeah, and I guess uh, one of the verbs that comes to my mind too is the idea of stalking. So I think of stalking as a positive quality. It's the, um, it's like a refusing to give up quality. It's um, even if you're not there at the thing, but you keep going and going and going. So you're stalking hopefulness. You're stalking the knowing that you can make it through this. It's not to do it at a, like the cost to your livelihood, but doing it for your livelihood. Doing it for your aliveness. All right, well, we got Sally back on now. Yeah, practitioners, any other practitioners? I think we've got Sandra here. If you want to turn on your video, I'll bring you up front too. Thank you, Victor, so much for, for sharing your question. Yeah, we never know how the, the themes will, will unfold. And thank you so much. Great wisdom for everyone. All right, practitioners, we have we have made it to the end of our two and a half hours. Um, we're going to go through and just share, um, everyone go through and we're going to share a bit about, who, again, who we are, our modalities, and then how people can reach out to us um, on the web. So it's here on the video. So when people watch later, they can find us if they want to. Um, unwind. And let's, so I guess, let's see who was here early on. I remember, but I guess um, Kendara and Susie, um, why don't you start off? Well, I loved working with every single one of you here. The energy was amazing. The connection was great. And there was so much synchronicity and backup. So it was a pleasure and an honor. So I hope to work with you again. Thank you, Lorelai. It was great. And Kendara, did you say your website or something like that? Oh, okay. My website is, I'll put it in chat, but it's kendaralaurel.com. It's great. Yeah, we want people to watch the video that don't have the chat years later to be able to find you. <laughs> and you do, do you want to just say you do I Ching and I do I Ching. I do terrible belief shifting, but I also have an introduction mm -hmm. to metaphysics meetup, um, which has about 3,165 members and has people come online and talk twice a month from all over. And um, I'll put that in too, because I'd love, I'd love to have come, some of you come and present, but I'd also like to have you come and see it. So um, I'll put it in my thing. Thank you, Lorelai. Um, I guess my main thing is I like to teach. I love to teach and mentor people. And I'm sure a lot of the people here do too. So thank you. Great, Kendara. And I got all your information in the chat for everybody. Yay, thank you. Very great, including your special. Susie. I'm Susie Parker Goins with Blue Lightning Healing and Blue Lightning Healing Meditations. I channel and even as we were doing tonight, I was doing light language and past life exploration and energy healer. Um, I've got a podcast, Blue Lightning Healing Meditations. And, you know, look me up at bluelightninghealing.com and you can reach me at Susie at bluelightninghealing.com. We have a thread here. Um, I am so grateful 
to have such a loving and supporting group of practitioners here. This has been really moving for me. And so I'm grateful to everyone and I hope to see you at another event. Blessings to everyone. Thanks, Susie. And I didn't think morning, but if maybe Sandra and then Sally. Hi, I'm Sandra Jeffs. I'm an empath. I'm clear, uh, clairvoyant. Um, and I have soul essence awakening, which is energy healing, and it combines all of the different modalities that I've done over the past 40 some odd years. <laughs> I'm a feng shui master. And uh, I bring that into my healing also because we live in a physical world, we live in a physical body and feng shui is about aligning our inner self with our physical world and our physical being. Um, I also make jewelry and particularly spiritual jewelry because everything is energy and the gemstones, the jewelry, the metal that you wear uh, affects us and can enhance us if we're intentional about choosing what we put on our bodies and near us. So that's me. You can reach me at sandrajeffs.com. Thanks, Sandra. All right, Sally, and then um, Audrey and Susan. Hi, I'm Sally from Sally Spiritual Guidance. I'm an intuitive, psychic, um, tarot and oracle card reader, as well as a psychic medium. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, pretty much everywhere, Sally Spiritual Guidance. You can Google me. Um, my email address is Mama Sally Spiritual, but I also just added a Sally Spiritual Guidance one at gmail.com. So if you forget, you can always just try to you know, email me at uh, Sally Spiritual Guidance at gmail.com. Um, my Etsy shop is 20% off. Um, I just enjoyed this evening very much. My dog's not feeling well. He's sick. So that's why I wasn't on camera a lot. He's, he just turned 13. He has congestive heart failure and he's just not doing well. So I had to kind of keep my camera off tonight, but I was present. I was listening and I'm, you know, I enjoyed it. And I'm just so grateful that you guys all came and I hope you have a great night. Thank you. Thanks, Sally. All right, Audrey, and then Susan. Hi, um, my name is Audrey. I am. Uh, I have a passion for uh, the metaphysical knowledge like astrology, numerology, uh, tarot, destiny cards, all of that. And I uh, also love to be in touch with our intuitive side. Uh, you know, so I feel that our spiritual presence is developed uh, stronger or empowered by our, um, you know, by our feelings or our reaching out. So all my, uh, <laughs> all my teaching materials can be found at my website, Audrey Lee metaphysics.com and I also welcome you all to come to my meetup uh, every Monday evening uh, at Metaphysical Haven. Thank you. Thanks Audrey. Susan. I'm Susan Watkins with Inspired Life Essential Wellness and I work in energy healing with Reiki and sound healing. I'm a Reiki master. I'm also a yoga teacher so I will do some guided meditations and mindful movement to help people just move through whatever blocks physically, emotionally, mentally that might be keeping them stuck. And you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at inspiredlife.essentialwellness. You can also email me at inspiredlife.service at gmail.com. And I have a YouTube channel, which has a, a few of my uh, meditations and sound healings, um, but I don't have enough subscriber to have my own like YouTube <laughs> handle. So I think if you just typed in inspired life, essential wellness, you'd probably find me. So it's been wonderful to be a part of uh, this panel and so grateful to share this evening with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. I'm Laura Leishmayo. I'm an intuitive eye reader and a body psychology coach. You can learn more about me at laureleishamayo.com. That's L-A-U-R-E-L-I-S-H-I-M-A-Y-O.com. And for being here today, I offer 40% off on my sessions and I offer a BIPOC discount as well. So that's an extra 40% off that discount. And there's tons more happening here with mewefairs.com. That's M-E-W-E-F-A-I-R-S.com. Some of our upcoming events are tomorrow. We have Lionsgate Cosmic Activation. Um, August 8th is uh, an alignment of various uh, 
things in the sky that make it a time for um, opening and shift and change. And we'll be setting the stage for that tomorrow evening. On Friday, we have a practice circle for strengthening your gifts. That's an opportunity to share whatever um, modalities and practices you're doing with peers. We'll be supported by uh, Susie and myself. And then on Sunday, or maybe Sunday, Susie and I are doing one on August 8th. Maybe, or I can't remember if we're doing one on Friday or not. No, I got to find out who's doing that with me. And then Sunday- hey, I didn't I, think I was. No, it's, not you, it's not you. I got to figure out who it is. It might be someone. I can. <laughs> Sunday, August 8th, Susie and I are doing an anything and everything panel, training panel. So that's an opportunity for people that are newly practicing, newly on stage or opening to new modalities, doing a panel on any topic and we support them. And then Friday, August 13, we have a panel on witchcraft and alchemy. Sunday, August 15, we have our fair. We currently have nine practitioners signed up, so we have space for more practitioners. We aim to have around 15 or so of us. That's an opportunity to get to know us. We answer a few questions on the panel, and practitioners are available in breakout rooms, answering questions about their work, offering talks, all for free, and they're available to do sessions at well as well at the, the lower prices that we, examples, the kinds of prices that we have as our specialists today. And you can learn more about us at mewefairs.com and this recording and all of our recordings are up on YouTube and more getting uploaded um, shortly. And yeah, Sally's puppy is adorable. All right, and hope that right, everyone's feeling better. Thank you everyone so much for being here. I'm reminded again about the, the transcript from tonight. I don't usually record the transcripts, but I'm going um, down in closed caption by the carrot. If you want, you can click view full transcript and then you can save the transcript from tonight. So if you want, you can hear everything that we said. That's pretty accurate. Not exactly, but it's close. So yeah, just know that's available if you want that as well as being able to save the chat. All right. So thank you so much, everyone. Anyone want to share anything else? Is there anything else that anyone's motivated to share tonight before we finish? All right. I'm going to turn off the recording. Uh, thanks everyone so much for being here for a big, deep, right? Expansion into love and self-healing and trusting our journey. Big thanks. <laughs>